Full screen, hello. Full screen, hello. All right, and we're good. All right, and we're good. All right, and we're good. Okay. Testing one, two. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. All right, that sounds a little bit better. Cool. We have some work to do. Stun chance. Apparently, this is not bad. Let's try that. And then we also want to look for blind on hit eventually. Cool. See if this reads from Twitch and YouTube. All right, we're good.
Alright folks, time to get our core of the mountain. How many attempts did it take me to um, hit the Weaver's Gloves? I'll be honest, it was actually my first attempt. I, I got pretty lucky on that one. So, probably uh, not expected, but I'll take it. Hey, Odeki, how's it going? How are you? I'm great, thank you. Welcome to the stream. Lucky boy, yeah. Yeah, I did get pretty lucky. A lot of my crafts end up being really lucky this season so far. To be fair, though, the good luck always comes with the bad luck, you know? You don't really get to pick and choose. I did have some painful uh, RNG. But also, I got these um, these red rings last week with T7 int and then also this double prefix twisted heart so I'm not allowed to complain anymore about RNG I've been told that I'm, I'm no longer allowed to complain hey SHK what's up welcome to the stream Yobel Gamer, what's good? How are you guys doing this fine evening? Or morning, or night? Because of, you know, time zones and all that. How's corruption pushing going? Uh, pretty good. I've been pretty busy with making content, and uh, I also spent, like, six hours organizing my stash yesterday, so that pretty much ate through the whole day. I didn't get to push any corruption. I had like 15 dump tabs of, of stuff to go through. And then the day before, I think I was working on videos and other stuff. It was really hard to get the time to actually push corruption. Very time consuming. But also there's there's been some I guess new developments on the build. Some stuff I've learned over the last couple days that might actually end up making the um, the build a little bit better, so I'm hoping I can test some of that stuff out and maybe report my findings. Any crazy ideas for new builds with high or min max all the way? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of hard. A lot of my focus has been directed at this one build and then also, uh, like creating content and stuff. So I haven't really had time to actually look at other builds. I should just be running through killing all this stuff is a waste of time. I don't need to right click that much either, just like one tap and they're I'm so used to cor um, high corruption. But yeah, I, d I don't know. I'm kind of just waiting for the patch notes for cycle 2 before I really dig into a new build. There's some things I wouldn't mind trying, but we'll have to see. This build is cracked even with less optimized gear. T4 Jewelra at 87, nice. Good job, that's pretty awesome. Basically face tank, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much how the build works. How are you finding the uh, the monolith so far? I'm guessing they're like super easy for you, right?
But yeah, see, here's the here's the slam from the T4 Titan. You saw it, it hit me and like my ward didn't even go down. Like all this stuff just doesn't really do any damage. Uh, what's going on? Did I not put my fire on the thing? Super easy, really fun. Yeah, a lot of a lot of loot. 100%, especially once you push some corruption, it makes a big difference. Which this build can do. When you push corruption, is the same for every timeline or just one? Uh, it's just the one timeline you push, but they, they have a catch-up mechanic so that it's quicker to get other timelines caught up. You wish they made Sork stronger? Yeah, I, I agree. It feels like Sork is just a worse version of Rune Master right now. All right, let's uh, let's tank the the green beam here, just for demo purposes. Yeah, see, normally that beam one shots builds, and you can see it basically doesn't do any damage to this build. It's just extremely tanky. Uh, never core. I should probably spec into some move speeds if I want to run a bunch of these. Um, you're following my build. You should you should push Reign of Dragons. The boss is really easy. Not that it really matters. They're all easy, but the uh, Reign of Dragons boss will drop you the Twisted Heart. Um, so what you want for this build is ideally you want to get an LP Twisted Heart. It's not necessary, but you want one of these, and you you stack them up pretty quick once you uh, once you get up there in corruption. But these are really important. You hit a one and four on your int slam on your static shell. Congrats, that's awesome. Yeah, you're you're uh, you're in a pretty good spot then. This int is extremely important on the chest piece because you get up to twenty four. The other ones only go up to 16. Yeah, you're probably feeling a lot stronger right about, right about now. Uh, I feel like I should I should get some move speed. Is it worth trying to slam a plus three frost claw on one LP twisted heart? Um, I'm assuming that your COF my issue was I've actually dropped, I just showed all these, all these are my 1 LP Twisted Hearts. This is how many I've dropped, plus the ones that I've bricked. There's quite a lot. And w during all of that farming, I've only ever dropped two plus four Frost Claws. So like, you can, you can wait out for a, for a plus four if you want, but if you're farming Reign of Dragons, you're probably going to find that plus four is more rare than the actual Twisted Heart itself. So you might be okay to just do a three. Or if you want, another option is 16 int. This is fine too. If you want to run 16 int, you can combine that with the unstable core. So this with the 16 int. And then you just run 23 points of Frost Claw, so minus this point here. And then instead of plus levels on your Frost Claw, you just you have more Int, which is more Ward, more damage, more cast speed. Uh, yeah, if you can't get plus four, probably just go with Int. Both options are fine though. It doesn't doesn't really matter. I think T7 Int is better. Oh, you managed to drop the red rings. Let's go. Congrats. And welcome to the stream. Still comfy in 2200. Yeah, I'm still pretty comfy. Uh, there's a few improvements that I can make. We have the permanent stun lock set up for Shade, so Shade basically can't kill us unless we mess up. And most monsters don't do damage. The only weakness right now is damage over time, and there's a few ways that I can work on that. I don't really have the correct setup yet, but uh, ideally I'm able to address the that weakness and then it should be extremely easy. Uh, you're lacking so much 
armor. What is the first and easiest step to get armor idols? Um, well, first, if you don't have the armor blessings, you need to do that. The, the blessings give a lot of armor. That's number one priority. And then once you've done that, the idols are also pretty nice. You can just run the prophecies for that. The uh, the one by one idols. They're not strictly necessary, but you can do that. No LP though. Ah. I think red ring LP is pretty unrealistic, unless you're willing to to grind a lot. Like it, it took me quite a few million favor to get LP red rings, and then even even then I I got lucky with the slam too. So I, I probably shouldn't have P7 int red rings. Just way way too much way too much luck. You st still feel they're worth it. Yeah, I, I think they're worth it. But there's you can use other stuff. If you don't have the T7 int red ring, which most people probably don't. You can still use the T7 int Jolra Star Dial, or a T7 int Opal Ring is really good because it gives CDR and plus two attributes. I honestly think a T7 int Opal Ring might be better than a zero LP Red Ring if you don't need the, the defense yet. Because that's like five, five intelligence versus potentially 18 intelligence, plus a few other affixes. The nice thing about Red Ring, though, is that it gives you the all res, so you don't have to worry about resist much on the rest of your gear. That makes doing your gear setup a lot easier. You prefer being more tanky? Yeah, same. I feel like I might just swap out my setup. Go for like a more speedy farming setup. It's a little bit too slow. I think I have move speed, move speed boots somewhere that I could use. Uh, yeah, I think I'll swap out for, for more move speed. You made on changing your dagger build to ladle. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the ladle. I think ladle is better than dagger late game. All right, here we go. Let's tank it. And the other one. Nice. I remember when this boss used to be pretty challenging. Not so much anymore. What reason are you running it? I'm trying to get an LP core of the mountain. I'll show what it looks like after this. Big in, big armor, yeah. Yeah, so I think what I might have learned in the last couple days, I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like the more armor against shocked enemies, the value, this on the static shell, doesn't actually work with the um, DOT mitigation, the experimental and the implicit. So that's what I was basing my entire decision on the static shell on is that I assumed I could use the armor multiplier from the static shell combined with the armor mitigation for DOTs to get a huge amount of DOT mitigation. 
but it's like somewhat confirmed that that doesn't actually work that way. And that means that getting an actual higher character sheet armor value will will be more effective than like a pseudo armor value with the static shell that only works against its, it seems like. A little bit unfortunate. But yeah, uh, so static shell, or no, not static shell, um, core of the mountain, this is what it looks like. Hey Fabio, what's up? You got me live? I am live. Or maybe this is a pre-recording, I don't know. Maybe I recorded all this last night. You don't get what makes Ladle better than Dragreth. Uh, Ladle has cast speed scaling with int, and we have over 200 int. So that's over 100% uh, free cast speed. It also gives us minus mana built in. It gives us 48% more damage. Gives us a bunch of uh, free shred and some other ailments that are nice. Frailty is actually really good. Uh, the ladle just does so much. It's such a good item. And it synergizes really well with the Enigma. Headhunter, what's up? Good evening and greetings from Hamburg, Germany. Hope you're having a good evening, and I'll actually be in Germany in a few months. I'm pretty excited. I am Canadian. But yeah, let's uh, let's keep going. We got some farming to do. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I need to switch out for move speed. What am I doing tonight? I'm trying to get a core of the mountain, but I would like to. Try and make a speed farming setup for this build. So right now I'm a little bit slow. Uh, I think if I do wrong warp, I might be able to actually get a little bit more, a little bit more juice for the rogue. Uh, no, for this build, core of the mountain gives int and some damage immunity and some other good stuff, a bunch of armor. So I want to farm that for this build and then slam int onto it, hopefully. This build is very wild. Yeah, hundred percent. How how far into corruption are you with your uh, with your setup? What are the rolls on this? What do we want here? Spell damage fifty to sixty. We don't really care. Haste on hit. It's going to be up permanently. And cooldown recovery for teleport. It's a perfect roll. I think this is what we want. Okay, so we're going to run this. And what else? Can we get a little bit more speed? I don't really need defense, so we can do movement speed. I think I can run. What can I run to give me more move speed? I could run the belt. I could run a belt. It's probably not bad. You hit 1k corruption? Congrats, that's awesome. It does take forever. <laughs> yes, it does. You are right. You can tell they don't want you to get to 1000 Corruption in this game. Uh, none of these have... Hmm. Cooldown is kind of good, but I think I need... Actually... I don't really need reduced bonus damage taken. Not that important. I'm going to run this. It has a bunch of CDR. Um, I do think that this build is going to be nerfed, yeah. I was on uh, Lizard IRL stream the other day, and according to him, the um, Gift of Winter refunding mana per cast is actually supposed to be direct cast. So all of these additional casts giving us back mana is not supposed to happen. This is this is not confirmed or anything. This is just like word of mouth. But this is about 80%. These nodes make up about 80% of our mana recovery. So if this was changed to only work on direct cast, it would basically kill this version of the build. Because we, we would not be able to mana sustain. We'd go from a deficit of about 1 mana per second while casting to uh, about 17 
mana per second. Uh, actually, no, actually, it'd be worse than that. Wait, hold on. Let me plug that into my spreadsheet. I, th I think it would actually be worse than that. Uh, Frostclaw Mana Calculator. Yeah, no, that's that's about right. It'd be, it'd be around there. Wait, hold on, no. No, never mind. We'd be at a mana deficit of about 65 mana per second. If it only worked on the direct cast. So that's basically unmanageable unless you change the build. That's a pretty big problem. And there's also a few other issues too. Uh, one example seems to be the area here. This bypasses the trigger. So there's some speculation that that's intended, but it seems like this is actually not intended either. So you notice like the every single Nova is full screen AoE, even though this is a plus four cooldown. That seems to also be a bug. And I think there's a few other bugs too that are, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that, that there's might actually be a lot more bugs than originally thought. But yeah. Uh, have you seen the shotgun sword? Uh, are you talking about this? Is it static orb, the shotguns? I think that's what you're talking about, right? So they fix what they need to make other options viable and make that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, even, even minus five wouldn't be enough. You'd need some like some crazy mana reduction. Even Foot of the Mountain would probably not be enough. I'm, I'm not actually sure how you would make it work. This Frost Claw is just is, it's too heavy of a mana cost. Maybe you could drop Volley of Glass, but that's really painful. I don't really like that setup. I don't know. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it'd be possible anymore. You'd need some like new technology to give yourself a huge amount of mana regen the only way I see it working. Um, but yeah, let's let's try and get our speedy speedy boy going. What do we have? We have a spare prefix. What do we want for prefix? Probably we don't actually need to put a prefix on. We'll just do this. And then I think what I'm going to do I don't need snap freeze right now. I'm going to spec into teleport. No, we don't care. Global cooldown. That sounds pretty useful. I don't know if I have points for that, though. Stun immunity. Yeah, so I can't grab any of that. I think we do just grab. Ward gained per point of int. Huh. Okay. All right, so let's do that. So we have a 2.2 second cooldown teleport. Nice. You're planning to have double mitigation gloves for endgame, which affix T7. T7 int with T5 insight crafted armor mitigation uh, build. Sorry, I don't have my command set up right now, but I can uh, I can link you my cheat sheet. This uh, Google Doc has basically everything that you need to know about the build. Includes some resources, some affix information, and stuff like that. Uh, all right, so the setup should be good. Let's do this. So now... Oh, they share a cooldown. That's kind of shitty, isn't it? Forgot about that. I forgot. Is there any reason to run both? 
we get the mob uh when you cast teleport you're teleported become immune and gain chrono warp yeah I, I need this for the move speed so let's do that these give move speed so i have 18 here i have another bit here uh so this gives me do i have haste I don't think I have haste. Uh, I need haste. This gives haste, doesn't it? Oh, you need to get haste first. What can I use to, to get haste? Then I can just permanently refresh the cooldown. Haste on Traversal Experimental? Uh, do you know if it's possible to calculate uh, craft T5 Experimental Mitigation? Yes, you can. It is possible. Uh, check out the Tunk Labs Calculator tool. I've actually done it before. Uh, this I crafted with Insight Crafting. Best view, what? Uh. All right, let's. Okay, yeah, you might be right about experimental. I think that's a good option. We'll see if we have any good ones. This has move speed and haste. That's pretty good. Let's see if we have anything better than that. Well, what was what was that notification? Oh, it's actually the first time I've heard that. I'm just set up uh, set up the notification. Thank you so much, Headhunter, for the sub. You scared me. <laughs> Whoa! And the gifted subs too. Thank you so much. I almost had a heart attack. I was just sitting here like. Are you streaming on Twitch too? Yeah. You almost gave me a heart attack just sitting here, like, looking at my stuff. I'm like, what the hell is that sound? But yeah, thank you so much. That's absolutely huge. The five gifted subs. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the, uh, the dual broadcasting. These have 24. Let's try that. And the follow. Thank you so much. You guys are coming in huge. Uh, like a professional? I wouldn't call it a professional. I'm pretty terrible at it. Clearly. I don't even know what my notifications sound like. Probably should have tested that first. You watch your video on the build. Godspeed your game. You can't stand the amount of RNG. Yeah, there's a lot of RNG. I agree. Minion army builds. I hate minion builds. 100%. I agree with you there. Uh, okay, so I think the strat here... I think what we're going to do is we're going to Rune of Research, then we're going to craft Int on this. Okay, we got five, so that's a bad roll, no Glyph of Order here. We got seven. Uh, so move speed is max, Int is crap. I forget, can you seal if you already have? No, you can't. Dodge rating is useless. We can reroll this. Uh, you do nice work and explain it well. That must be rewarded. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that a lot. I try to I try to make sure the content I put out is 
quality, but sometimes I, you know, not always sure if it's good enough. But yeah, that, that means a lot for me to hear. We did full circle. We started with dodge rating, came right back to uh, dodge rating again. Okay. These boots are good. We got the haste, so... Alright, how much move speed do we have? 150. Okay. That's not bad. We can we can probably do better, right? I think we can probably do a little bit better than that. Do we have any more move speed? Actually this would this give more move speed? I think it would, wouldn't it? So we have way more haste effect. Let's try that. Alright, nice. Very good, just very niche. Uh what is niche? The build? Or you're saying the, the move speed setup? Okay, so we do have move speed here. After using traversal, we get move speed, so we have that. That's permanently up, which is great. Then we should get move speed here. Do you have any weavers with move speed? Uh, good question. I might. Uh, no. These wouldn't even be better, would they? They don't give enough move speed. I do have a... Actually, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I might have a... I might have boots on my... Oh, sorry, Blackjack. Missed your message. Hello. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Uh, it's... Oh, I see what you're saying. The content I do is probably not the average LE players that will watch this, but they should. Um, I think it depends on, on the content. I try to have a little bit of variety. Good night, everyone. I have to go to sleep. Well, thank you so much for dropping in at Hunter, and also for the, uh, for the gifted subs. That was really awesome of you. I appreciate that a lot. And yeah, hope you have a, hope you have a great night. Alright, how much how much move speed does this give? This is 24 plus 18 plus 35. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think this might be better. So that's 42 plus 35. It's over 70. Alright, let's try this. This also gives move speed on potion use, but I don't think I'm going to... forgot I had those boots. I need haste from something, though. I'm pretty sure I can get haste from some, like, crappy unique or something. Any, any crappy unique should just give me haste. But yeah, I think I think a lot of the content I've been making lately around the the frost claw, I am concerned it's a little bit too endgame for a lot of people. I've gotten comments like, "Oh, the gear is unrealistic and stuff," which is understandable. Like if you look at a build guide and you see like LP red rings and two LP twisted hearts, you're probably going to be like, "Oh, yeah, this is like unrealistic." But that's why I put up the uh, the budget guide as well a couple weeks ago. So, hopefully it's still somewhat accessible. Wait a minute. Uh, this gets haste? Oh, that's the rock. Okay. This gets haste on hit.
Oh, I forgot. It has like the, the perfect synergy with the stymied fate. These things are uh, questionable. Yeah, you, you don't need any of this stuff, but a lot of people, they just see it and they're like, oh, this is the build. This is what I need. Well, I'm not doing that. But like, this is the gear you need to do like probably 4,000 corruption, right? Like, this is not the gear you need to start the build. But I, I think it's... A lot of people don't necessarily... I don't know. I mean, it's it's fair though, right? Like, if you're looking at a bunch of builds and you see, like, crazy stuff, you might not know what's necessary or not. You have a 4LP ladle? Yeah, I don't, I don't even... I have, like, a bricked 3LP with, like, missing suffix. I've never dropped a 4LP ladle. Uh, okay, Quicksilver, I think, is a pretty good option here. We could use Quicksilver. Uh, this gives haste on hit. I'd rather use Argentus, though. Pretty sure we don't need any of our good stuff. Alright, let's see how this goes. We gotta farm something crappy, then we gotta... Gotta make it go by a little quicker, right? Have a little fun with it. Okay, so... We have haste now. So this is 151 with the setup. 162. Hey, Dark Lotus, what's up? Welcome back. And with this, we have... Yeah, the other one's better. This is better. 162, and this one was 158. It literally shows slot by slot the roles required for the build function. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to be as as clear as I can, but I don't. I don't think a lot of people are gonna read all of that. Six. Now we use Glyph of Order. We have eight. Very nice. Uh, we'll reroll Dodge. Sixteen. I can. I can actually maybe get a little bit more here. Seventeen. Sure. Plus one move speed. Armor. Great. It's not a bad boot. All right, cool. Do we have any other move speed nodes? It's just this one, okay. Let's see how this feels. My gear is absolutely janked right now. I took everything off, but we'll see. We'll see if we can still clear. Uh, wrong warp is annoying. There's some guides with 4LP twisted art? No way. No way that people are doing that. Even a merchant skill, there's no way. 
if somebody actually put that on their guide, then they they don't know how the game works. This feels a little bit better. The wrong warp teleport's really annoying. How much do I lose not using wrong warp? Oh, Thirty percent move speed. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. All right, fair enough. Yeah, that's fine. I feel like we don't really need any of our gear to actually play the build. Build is just way too strong. If only the wrong warp actually teleported you in the correct direction. It would feel a lot better. Let's see if we can do the boss with wrong warp. You gave up on your room master. Why are you giving up on the room master? Room master is so sad. Room master is just like you never call anymore. Never visit me. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Damage over time, health regen. Okay. We got nothing. 30k ward. Yeah, these, this is just like peanut numbers. This is a small ward. We're not even like running our, our build. I just threw a bunch of random gear on. These like random boots, random belt. Unslammed ring. How much mana? Uh, 22. You want it to be either 22 or 23. Anything more than that, and it's hard to deal with. Five weeks now, and you haven't gotten a ladle or heart drop. That's actually crazy. Uh,. Is there a way I can give you one? Not, I'm not sure. I don't think so, right?
You reach 50 AK ward without using Twisted Heart. Yeah, I, I don't think Twisted Heart is actually mandatory. It's definitely... It's definitely really important. But you, you can perform the build without it. It's it's fine. If you don't have Twisted Heart, though, you probably need a uh, plus level relic, like an Exalted Relic or something. Why am I killing stuff? I don't need to kill anything. Just trolling myself. I should just be running. Oh, I left the ladle on. Should be using the wrong one. You're scared to slam your T7 relic into a 2 LP. Fair enough. Just do do what I did though. The strategy is to not mess up your slam. You just take the the relic and then get the prefixes you want, and you're good to go. Easy game. But yeah, I, I think if if you have the item you need, you have T7 Frost on, then then what else do you have? Oh, if you, you don't have an alternative, right? If you miss the slam, then you're you have nothing else to use. I don't actually know if wrong warp is worth using. It's really annoying. I don't think Wrong Warp is worth using. It's such a pain. It's like teleporting me back. I feel like the amount of ground I lose from going backwards is worse than the move speed I gain. Wait, Wrong Warp has haste on hit. Oh, I don't even need this ring. Uh. Show belt and boots, please. Uh, th this is just troll belt and boots. You don't you don't want these. This this is what you actually want. Strand of souls. With the reduced crit, it's not mandatory. You can get cooldown reduction. And then boots, you want Blood of the Exile with Int on it. You have tons of T6. T6 is good enough. I think I'd just slam it, and if you get it, great. The day you actually hit a slam on 1 LP, I'll stop playing. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done that before in games. Where you have some like crazy goal, and then you finally get it, and you don't know what to do anymore. You just get bored. I don't I don't think that's gonna be me. Not this time anyway. Just way too much fun. Yeah, this feels a lot better. Yeah, I, I think I like this more. You got a T6 alley damage on your Jolra Ring, nice. Yeah, the Jolra Ring is is pretty pretty strong as well. Yes, yeah, so we get haste here. Haste effect, is this worth it? Yeah, I think so. Ah, what are all these noises? I don't know what's going on. Raiding with a party of 25. Pinching Loaf, what's up? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Hope you had a great run. 
To everybody just joining, this is not actually my build. I'm trolling. This is not a real build. Do not copy this. Welcome all the raiders. You guys are just going to be like coming in and being like, oh damn. What is this guy doing? He's trolling. Looks cool. Yeah, it's it's just the it's just the meta frostclaw, except I'm trying to get a little bit more move speed for running mountain. Yeah, I hope you guys are all having a great day. Um and welcome, welcome. Right now we're trying to get Core of the Mountain with T7 Int. What's the beam ability? Uh, the beam ability is Runic Invocation. I'm just testing out some, some stuff right now. How's the stream going? The stream's going pretty good. We just booted it up. I'm trying to, uh, trying to get some more move speed on my Rune Master so that I can farm Core of the Mountain. The, the problem is, with the normal setup, you don't really have a whole lot of move speed. Why is this so slow? So yeah, right, right now I just grabbed a bunch of haste and all that. I'm not running the standard setup right now, no. Uh, let me just swap back in. Yeah, you, you can see there when I swap back in, it's a little bit better. The spinning thing is not supposed to be happening. That's because I swapped in Teleport, which broke my Runic Invocation. It's supposed to be Railwinds. Uh, yeah, so we got 2 LP and never lucky. Feels bad. Alright. Here we go again. Do you ever have to press W or E, or do they self-proc when needed? I do. I do manually press them. But you don't have to, you can unlock. How do you get the red rings? You've been trying for two days. Uh, these red rings? I got these both from Prophecies. It, it actually took quite a few attempts. Um, let me show you guys. These are all of the different red rings I've dropped so far, so... Yeah, they, they're, it's really hard to get LP on your red ring. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't worry too much about getting that. One of the rarest rings, yeah. It is It is the rarest ring, 100%. Got to take the dog, so I hope you have a great stream. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for dropping in. You feel like you got lucky not even build one tab. You got your red ring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got extremely lucky. Red ring is so rare. You can see the, yeah, the, the vid. I got both of these rings back to back. And then everybody thought it was like bugged. They're like if you slam the same uh, duped item from Prophecy with the same Rune of Creation Exalt, that you get the same outcome. So then I actually had to go and test that, and it turns out you don't. But yeah, everyone was everyone was thinking I was cheating there for a second. I thought I was cheating. Super sus. Oh, we forgot to switch back our boots. There we go. Oh my god, this dungeon layout is so painful. Hey, Belfort, what's up? What are you cooking now? Core of the Mountain for my Frostclaw. I want to test that out. So right now we're using Static Shell. And the idea behind Static Shell was that I could use the um, Experimental Glove Affix. Armor Mitigation applies to damage over time. And 
It seems like that actually doesn't work. That interaction is broken. So I guess let, let me give a little bit of context. As soon as my game loads. Yeah, so the idea that I was going for originally is, is there's an experimental glove affix as well as a implicit on the eternal gauntlet that gives armor mitigation applies to DOT. The reason why this is so good is in high corruption, DOT is what kills you generally. And I was planning on stacking armor and then multiplying the armor with static shell. So right now we have, well, not, not much, but... Yeah, so right now we have about 3,500 armor, so with Static Shell it goes up to like 9,000 something. But then it turns out that the armor mitigation doesn't actually work with Static Shell for DOTs. So now I'm trying to just go for actual character sheet armor value, and hopefully that works a little bit better. But yeah, that's that's the idea right now. Still a lot of theory crafting for this build if we want to keep pushing corruption. But hopefully, uh, hopefully we can continue to min-max and learn some new things. What corruption am I at? I'm at uh, like 2300 and something right now. Not with this setup, obviously. This setup is super janky. But yeah, there's also... Um, you can do a stun lock with this build on uh, Shade of Orbis. It's basically impossible to die to shade if you do your stun lock correctly. And then regular echoes are not really a challenge for this build either. So you you can probably push past 3000 corruption pretty easily. I mean, not, not easily, but it's possible. What are the, uh, what are the best blessings? I think best... Best Blessings depends on your build. But for this build specifically, I think the Armor Blessings are probably the best. As well as the All Res Blessing. Because we're already using Red Rings, and All Res goes really well with Red Rings. So then you pretty much get fully res capped. Just with the Blessing and the Red Rings. And also, I don't know if... Are you playing COF? Is the, uh, the XP blessing is really good for getting more favor. This favor gain is based on experience. You are farming LP court earlier. You gave up. You did 30 runs and got one non-LP. Yeah, this is, this is really painful. I might just go do some monos. I actually have a lot of favor to spend right now. I need to burn through all of this. Oh, wait. Hold on. You did something stupid last night? You were playing on your valley. You spent five million? Oh, no. The the gamble at the end of Lightless is, is a it's a trap. It's not good for uh, for COF. You you shouldn't do it. For Merchant Guild it can be okay. Depending on how much gold you have and all that other stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's it's pretty high LP level and it only has like a twelve percent drop chance. Oh, I didn't put the fire on the thing. What am I doing? <laughs> you only had 7 million? Oh no. You got sucked in by the Gamba. Feels bad. Never give in to the Gamba. I used to always uh, do the Gamba, but I've been pretty good in Cycle 1. I, I don't think I've done the Gamble. You must resist. Trying to farm Ravenous Void for your... for this build? Ah, come on. 
Game, why you do this to me? Wrong chess piece. All right, let's let's go do a gamble. Is doing this in Soulfire even worth anything? Um, if you want one of the boss drops, or if you are merchant skilled and you have a lot of gold, you can potentially make some pretty huge profit with big um, with big gambles. A lot of people make like crazy gold as merchant guild. Uh, helmets, I don't care about helmets. Items, sure, why not? Unique? Nah. Alright, and we're done. That's enough gambling for me. I almost spent all my gold. I only have a little bit left. Alright, that was a good gamble. Let's go grab props, please. The drop rate in the game reminds me of all the terrible gacha games. Ah, uh, I don't know. I think in in this game you can realistically get to end game without all the crazy drops. I think the crazy drops are just something to strive for, but it's not necessary. So I don't really think it's that bad. Uh, I'm gonna go do some monos. Let's put our actual gear back on. And let's put all this stuff away. Alright, so what I think I want now... What do we want? Probably... We want chest piece, helmets, boots, and exalted gloves. Hey Andreas, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, I think we can actually take armor, because we want most things here, so armor is good. Mike recently stated that prophecies are actually affected by LP. So ever since then, I've pretty much exclusively been doing them in my High Corruption Monos. You got the boots with T7 and, and move speed T5. The armor and current reduction really needed? No. I think armor is important for pushing corruption. But move speed is fine. I think move speed is probably the better choice for uh, lower corruption. But once you get to really high corruption, then... It's more important to be to be tanky. But even still, like it, it won't make a difference. If your gear is good, you'll be having no problem. Up until probably like 2000 corruption. And even then you might be okay. Boots. All right. You're level 60 at the minute. Yeah. Yeah, if you're you're already there in level 60, you're in a pretty good spot. Your mage runs Dragrith 3 LP? Yeah, Dragrith is pretty good. I, I still think Ladle is better endgame. Just because the scaling potential on the Ladle is really high. But, yeah, Dra Dragrith is also solid. Uh... The armor from I, okay. Sure. Is there a reason to use gaze over Unity Helm? Yeah, the uh the gaze gives base crit. The Unity Helm does not. I'll I'll show you what I mean in a second. So here you can see my crit chance is 99%. If I unequip the gaze. It goes down to 50. If I lose half of my crit from just taking off this one item, 
It's extremely hard to get crit chance without gaze when you don't have base crit on your amulet, or sorry, catalyst. You gotta 1LP core them out with T7 int. What? That's insane. I'm pretty jealous. Man, how are you getting a T7? That's crazy. Is the corruption the prophecy requirement? No. The the event does not matter. It's only based on where you actually complete it. Uh, eh. Alright, let's go... Armor. Okay. You didn't try to slam spell crit? Uh, no. The problem with the spell crit on the helmet and the chest is they need 300. They need 300 mana. Let me see if I can show that. Wait, hold on. Oh, this is not a. Give me one sec. Yeah, see the problem with the spell crit roll on the helmet and the chest is they need to have 300 mana to get the full bonus. And when you're using static shell or basically anything other than unstable core, it's hard to get 300 mana. So instead, I slam spell crit onto my ladle and catalyst, which gets me to cap. And then that leaves my helm and chest affixes open for something else. Watching your videos a lot? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for checking them out. You're gonna do ten lightless? Sure. Let me. That's quitter talk. You gotta you gotta commit to it, you know. Gotta go all in. Are there melee builds that can even come close to competing with the best range caster builds? Uh, I don't know. I think I think it's definitely like a ranged meta right now. Do you have a link for the build? Uh, yeah, give me one second. This is the Google cheat sheet I put together. It's basically the um, it's basically the guide, the written guide, and it links to some resources as well. Should. Oh, the Void Knight. Yeah, I, I saw some guy was doing like 3000 corruption with Void Knight. Looked pretty cool. I'm not sure what the setup is, but I, I heard it was pretty good. Is it preferable to just run T4 Jewelra for rings? No. No, uh, T4 Jewelra doesn't give any favor. It's better to run Prophecies, and you get more uh, favor for Prophecies running Monoliths. So I would probably focus on that instead. Body armor with shade. Okay. Using Rive. Ah. Huh. Yeah, Rive has some pretty cool scaling. If I'm remembering right, it's the one that gets like double double bonus for added damage. I think that was Rive, right? I haven't played Void Knight in a while. Boots from Mage. Oh, sorry, I missed the question. Why do my um why are my prophecies so expensive? It's because of the lenses here. They, they multiply the cost of your prophecies, but then you get more rewards out of them. You can see um, fulfilled 0 of 6, and it gets the double, uh, double quantity, double usage, basically. Hit that like button, thank you. Thank you for saying it, so I don't have to. Welcome back. And the follow. Thank you so much. You guys are coming in huge today. Uh, 
Okay, we need helmets. We need all that good stuff. And another one. Welcome to the crew, folks. Hope you enjoy your stay. Urat, no thank you. I do need to do gloves at some point. Also, when you're rolling prophecies, I generally prefer to grab the more expensive ones, just because they're more efficient as far as rerolls. So generally, even though they're, I think, slightly less favor efficient themselves, you end up spending less favor on rerolls. So you come out ahead. If you get two of the same, grab the expensive one, usually. Will you please show your passive setup as the one in the last link makes no sense? Uh, sure. You can also import my character, but this is my current setup for the, uh, the Frost Law. So the Sorcerer is pretty much unchanged. You get the crit chance here, you get cast speed, move speed here. You get the leech here with lightning pen. It's all the same. Mage is still the same. Room Master, I've changed a little bit here. Uh, I unspect Inferno. You could still use this. I think it's fine. Uh, I did respec into this because I found it more consistent. It's not necessary though. You can flame rush for brand if you want. Both of them work. And I don't remember if I had this spec'd in, but I think this is okay when your cooldown's pretty low because for three points you get 10 cast speed. So 3.3 .3 per node. So this is pretty good as well. And then I unspec'd crit chance because I am already crit capped. If you're not crit capped, you should run five points into this. But for me, I didn't need it, so then I just put the points into DR. What's my mana regen? Not very much, 11. This build doesn't actually rely on mana regen. You, it's all based on the refund with uh, Gift of Winter. As you cast, you get mana back. Mana regen is just not really important. It's nice to have, but it doesn't really do much. You're not capped yet? Uh-huh. You hit 350 last night. Congrats. Welcome to the big leagues. Let's go. You're climbing now. Helmet from I... Abomination. Yeah, this is where it starts to get fun once you get that corruption going. You're planning to use Frostclaw for Meteor. You mean with the Meteor Belt? Are you going to do like a... Cast on crit setup. Yeah, okay, that sounds pretty cool. I like that idea. Yeah, the Frostclaw itself is basically uh, net neutral for mana cost if you have it set up correctly. But if you can somehow use your Meteor for mana regen, you might be able to make something work a little bit better. But chances are, if you're doing the cast on crit, I think, I think you don't, you don't use it as a generator. You heard somebody say corruption above five to six hundred doesn't matter because of diminishing returns. Mm, I don't agree with that. I think that you could say it might not be worth going out of your way to do it, or it might not be worth your time depending on what your goal is in the game, but it, it definitely does give you value. Like, you'll you'll see in a second when I go do some Echoes, but I can get over 10,000 favor in a single Echo, which is like... Um, I don't know how many uniques, but a lot. And also, the, the XP that you get, the favor that you get, is not diminished. As you go into higher corruption, the XP scaling, which is favor scaling, is actually linear. So you continue to get more prophecies linearly as you go higher in corruption. It's really, really important. Rare enemy for boots. And yeah, the, the corruption chance does diminish as you go higher, but it's still free. So there's... As long as your build is not, like, really struggling, then you might as well keep pushing, I think. I don't know. I 
XP had diminished for two. Well, I mean, it's sort of right. Like it's it's not it's not actually like. Okay, so corruption for LP chance. The first hundred corruption, I think it gives you like five percent. I don't remember the actual numbers, but each additional five or each additional hundred corruption gives you less LP bonus than the last. Whereas uh, experience. That's not the case. But you need to push a lot further to get... Like, each time you double your experience from more corruption, you have to, like, double your corruption too, right? So it's, like, not exactly diminishing. I don't know if I explained that correctly. You get, like, roughly twice as much uh, experience from 2,000 corruption as you do from 1,000. I'll just say it that way. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. Void Horrors, I do not run because they only spawn in a couple monoliths. So avoid that. Body armor. Doing the Necropolis Streets farm at 50. I've heard that that might not actually be the best one anymore. I think that guide was made pre 1.0. Yeah, yeah, the LPL scaling is, is a thing now. That didn't used to be the case. I think this advice is pretty outdated. I've had a few people in my Discord saying that the streets is not the best anymore. I don't remember what they said was a better one. I haven't actually done a mage farm yet, but at some point I probably need to. So I'm still rocking a pretty terrible ladle. Discord. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me link that. I need to set all these things up. Just commands. Lakeside Trail, I think you're right. I'm pretty sure it was Lakeside Trail. Uh, armor. Yeah, so the, the mage setup, if, you, if you're not aware, Basically, you go to a very distant echo from the center, because the further you are, the more mages spawn. And then what do you do? Uh, I forget if you need to do modifiers. There's a favor farm setup, and then there's a mage farm setup. I, I forget if you want modifiers for the mage setup. I don't know if it matters. Where's Lakeside Trail? I'm pretty sure it's Reign of Dragons. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, cast and rain, yeah. What's your base mana cost? Uh, the base mana cost... You can't actually see it in the game, but I did build a calculator. This is my mana cost spreadsheet. You can see here, this is my current setup. The base cost is 14 before the multipliers. After multipliers, it's uh, between 21 and 22. You just find mage and leave. Yeah, you just like join the map if mage is not in the spawn area. You just leave over and over. The idea is that you find a map where the spawn locations are all near the start so that you have the highest chance of getting the mage when you load in. And if you don't see it, you just leave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What what Digital said. You need 21 mana for cast. Uh, 22 is okay as well. And 23 is possible, but not, not ideal. Basically, the way it works is if you have all the additional cast nodes in Frostclaw. Uh, let, let me explain how Frostclaw mana recovery works. So here you see Gift of Winter. It has a 36% chance to gain 12 mana on cast. That works with the additional cast nodes here. So this gives you one additional cast. This gives you one additional cast. And this one gives you two. So in total, 
each direct cast, you do five cast. And with this, each one has a 36% chance to give you 12. I'll spare you all the math, but basically that means on average, you recover 21.6 mana. So if your frost clock costs 21, it's actually a mana generator. And if it costs you 22, it's a slight mana drainer. So that hopefully helps you a little bit with your mana management. And these mana efficiencies are kind of important. And then these frost clock idols are also pretty important. Uh, but yeah, that's basically how it works. You started Room Master when you're on your board, you might get a 2 LP ladle. Let's go. Very nice. Congrats. And you hit your slam with your spell crit and Ellie damage. The build is amazing. Yeah, I, I can't I can't take full credit. This is kind of a community build at this point. It wasn't really originally my idea. Uh, so I, I won't take full credit for that. I'd like to think I've improved it, though. You offset it with mana regen on the neck, yeah. Your smash was bad, how <laughs> sad. Sad day. Uh, what well, you're trying to calculate right now is since you're using mana, you're doing mana fast. Uh, the minimum mana. I think you might actually be able to make something work if you have a... If you turn your Frost Slot into a mana generator. But I, I think it's going to be really hard. You're going to have to commit a lot into making that work. Although you could also try and get a minus 5 Scepter. And that would make it a lot easier. And also, Foot of the Mountain could be an option too for minus mana when you stand still. And then you can use that with Teleport to never lose the proc. So that could be an option for you. You can do it all without Frostla. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not super familiar. You might have better ideas than I do. It's going to terrify the mobs. <laughs> They're going to be running away. You went through multiple failed up to OP slammed your first three. Nice. Caspi crit multi and stun chance. Yeah, stun chance is actually really good. We've been talking about stun chance in the Discord. About how it might actually be one of the better um one of the best options. Still need to do some testing on it, but I, I think Stun chance might be S tier. We love to take credit, but someone did a video. Yeah. That seems to always be the case. Whenever you think you have an idea, somebody else probably has already had it. Oh, I am more full. All right. Thinking fireball. Um... Yeah, there's an affix that might help you. Where is it? Yeah, you can maybe do something with this affix. Chance to gain mana when you directly cast Rune Bolt or Fireball. Maybe Rune Bolt? I don't know. But something like this might be good. Alright, let's go do some farming. Yeah, I failed, um, I failed my first 3 LP ladle, and my second was actually okay. I hit double prefix, so it's fine. But I've only dropped two 3 LP ladles in my entire time playing in cycle one. You run church music. This is Skyrim, I'll have you know. Church music. I'm offended. Uh, is our setup correct? I think we messed it up, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Your fragment has one LP with crit multi. That's not too bad. And crit multi is, is uh, acceptable.
All right, is my build still messed? Do I, did I put all my gear back? I think I did, right? Yeah, I think we're okay. You bricked your only three LP. Damn, that's that's pretty brutal. I actually have uh I have a three LP holy lag. Oh no, my setup is messed, hold on. You see how I killed one monster and it gave me eight levels of snap freeze? This is this is what happens with high corruption. We were talking about experience. You get crazy experience. Uh, but yeah, let me fix my tree. This needs to be... Alright, there we go. So we have frost guard, that's good. Then this. Alright, we just need one more point for that to be working. You're so scared to get a 2LP twisted? Yeah, the 2LP twisted is like... The scariest slam. Although I've actually gotten more 2LP twisted than I have 3LP ladles, so I guess go go figure that. Not sure how that happened. But yeah, we were we were talking about experience. You see here it says uh, 2700 increased experience gained. That's how you get a bunch of favor. Kind of getting a bit of lag here. Still waiting for your plus four frost slot. Yeah, I I've only dropped two. They're really rare. Definitely a pain. I'd be happy with a with another three LP. Oh my god. I uh, shouldn't have both dropped them on the same spot. Need to move them. Trying to pull all my loot away so it doesn't all drop in the same pile. Alright. One LP. One LP. Okay. Now we search for the goods. Twenty-one weavers, sure, I will take it. Then everything here is uh, duplicated with COF rank ten. One LP Aaron's will. We'll take it. Another good chest might be Prism Wraps. I was talking to uh, Lizard the other day, and he was saying it was like S tier for this build. It's a pretty interesting idea. Gives you a huge amount of DR. I'm not sure if that would actually be better than, than armor, but... Oh my lag. Rare as hell with LP? Uh, yeah, it is It is pretty rare. I do have a couple 2LP prism wraps, though. But hitting a 2LP prism, or hitting a 2LP is, is a 1 in 6, so you can't really count on it. 11 all, I'll take it. Let's see if we get anything here. But yeah, I, I do think prism might be... It might be good, I'm just concerned. Losing all our armor on our chest slot is is pretty painful. If we're trying to stack armor, it might be a bit of a challenge.
You can't upgrade an affix pass 5, correct? How can I get motivated to farm when you only make upgrades? I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm having fun, so it's uh just always always looking for the next upgrade, I guess. It's always stuff to do, corruption to push, gear to drop, slams to do. Run your prophecies, get your loot. I guess I'll take 2 LP Falcon Fist. Why not? Is opening and closing the loot filter restore the loot? Yeah, it, it groups them together. That's why I do it. If only we had an LP loot filter, I'd be I'd be a happy boy. Do duplicate weavers get the same affixes? I don't think so. I've never tested it, but I think it's pretty safe to say that it wouldn't. What enemy type have you died to the most? Uh, for me, it's the probably the Smoldering Lithrak. I don't know if you're familiar with the the little fire circle guys. You like kill them and they put a bunch of fire circles on the ground. Those are like probably my number one rip enemy. Yeah, the the fire circle dudes. I've actually, I've actually died to, um, I died to the, the screaming bats in a shade fight once. Like, I, I poured it in to fight Shade of Orbis, and somehow a bunch of, um, the screaming bats poured it in with me. I, I don't actually know how it happened. Like, you, there should never be monsters in a shade fight. I actually have a, I have a clip somewhere on my streams. But yeah, somehow I died to those on a shade fight. That was pretty funny. If I was on hardcore, I would have been a little bit salty. So I just poured it in, I had like zero ward because you have to build it up, right? So I just instantly died. Annoying because I lost my gaze stacks, but. I don't know. It was a weird bug. I think it might have something to do with Arena. I had just left an Arena before that. Maybe the wave like, kept spawning or something? I, I don't actually know how it happened. I have to go back and look at the clip. Which one is better? Prophecies are bizarre. Um, I haven't actually played Merchant Skill, but to, um, I guess from what uh, Dreadful was saying, I'll take his opinion on this was basically that Merchant Guild is, is probably better for like the 0.1% of players at the top. There's like a very small number of players who have like insane characters with all the gold and that they could possibly want. And then for everybody else, Merchant Guild is like probably not as good. And then the other caveat, I think Merchant Guild is also really good for niche builds because you can get high LP items that are like low desirability for really cheap. So if, if you like to play, like, a bunch of build crafting of different niche builds, then Merchant Guild's probably the best for you. Whereas COF, you have to, like, target everything you want, which it, it takes some time. Uh, these are only 7 and 9. I think I can do better than that. I guess let's do let's do a boss. Why not? For those of you who don't know, if you have the boss kill prophecy, all of the little um, necrotic soul cages in this boss fight, these all count as bosses. Hello. 
Yeah, you can see they're popping prophecies. Time to get back to work. Alright, thank you for dropping in. Hope to see you later. If I'm on, I'm not actually sure how long I'll be on, but... Imagine dying with all of them on the ground. Uh, I've had that happen before, actually. I think I was doing something stupid. I just got myself killed. You die quite often from spires, uh, screen cutter loot drops, going back to loot, yeah. I've been making a habit of actually clearing those maps before I loot. Another tip for all you guys joining in for the first time. Make sure you put a portal before you kill the boss. You have a blue portal. I'll show you why in a second. Uh, 3 LP. It's crap, but I'll take it. The loot bomb, yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is what endgame COF looks like. What's the meme? You might not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. Peak performance is probably just playing Merchant Guild, though. If we're being honest. What are all these bots doing in the chat today? And a bunch of them. Uh, you like the merchant more, but that's because you have... Yeah, fair enough. If you want a bunch of different uh, characters on the go, then merchant's probably easier. It's hard to say. You get a lot of variety of drops with the COF too. Cold spires are insane. Yeah. Did I already look at these ones? 3%. 3%. Nope. The only downside at COF is boss specific? I mean, you say that, but I didn't actually have any issues getting my Twisted Hearts. The problem was getting the exalts for them. Although I, I play way too much, to be fair, but I think like in at a certain point you have all the boss drops you need, but then you might not have the exalts. And the favors for exalts are really not cost efficient. It's kind of a pain. I think in, in general though, you're you're probably right. Hey Salt, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good one. You're just in time for the classic loot explosion experience. Our boot, nice. Where's my other two LP bar boot? It's here somewhere. Hello? I know it's here. Can't hide from me. Did I already look at it? Am I blind? What? Oh, there it is. You're sleepy? Are you sleepy from your arena? Are you still doing arena? Did you make it to a thousand? Yeah, remember I mentioned before the boss to put a portal down first? You see the blue portal? Now I have I have two. There's a blue portal and a green portal. If you go through the blue portal, you get extra loot. You can see this chest here after the boss is not normally there, but because I went through the blue portal, I, I get the extra chest. It's pretty sweet. Hot tips. You decided to change your weapon, now you're at 17... 
for cast. Uh, are you at 17 with with 5 cast? Because you, you need the full extra cast for the mana recovery thing to work. Uh, with three shades, let's go a little bit further, I think. All the tidbits add up. Yeah, 100%. Dropping them like knowledge bombs all over you guys. Use the calc, it's an average 4 mana per cast, minus 5. Nice, okay. Alright, yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty good then. Hello gamers, what's up? How's it doing, Goa? Welcome back. I think if, if you don't really care about the ladle, then the scepter is probably better for the minus mana. You probably don't even need volley of glass either. I, I'm pretty sure that you could drop that. You can recolor the... Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can recolor the uniques based on their type. So in my case, I have um, I have the bases that I care about showing up in that blue color. Hey, thank you for the follow. What's good, friends? Hey, sushi. We got everybody in the club today. It's a full house. How's it going? How's your uh, How's your setup going? With your frost claw, did you get the the stun blind setup going? Hey, and another one. Thank you for the follow. Love your vids and content. Thank you so much. Really means a lot to me to hear that from you guys. And we get the pop. Since you're using Meteor, are you losing DPS without the volley? Uh, you're going to work on the stun blind tech once you find a good ladle. I thought you had a good ladle. Just slam it on one of your many 4 LP ladles. Blind is another sick affix. Yeah, yeah. Blind is what we've been talking about in the Discord. I think blind and stun chance seem like really strong as a defense. Uh, LP prism wrap, no thanks. Maybe I do start looting LP prism wrap again. I guess I'll take it. I already have a bunch, but I might end up slamming them. Can you only farm red rings in Age of Winter? No, you can farm them anywhere. You get them from the ring prophecy. Just make sure you uh, grab as many ring prophecies as you can. So it's pretty rare. Thirteen percent shred. Oh, see what is mine? I have thirty. I think 30 was enough tread, right? To make it work? These drops all from prophecies. Yes, they are. Yeah, I, I usually fill up my prophecies. I think I spent about 400,000 favor just now. And then I just go proc them all in monoliths. Good with 30? Nice, okay. Should you go for the one LP prophecies? Uh, I actually made a video on the one LP prophecies. Don't don't do them. The one LP prophecies are a huge trap. They're like always terrible value. Pretty unfortunate. They need to cut the cost by like 
probably 75% for them to be worth using. If you want to check out the video, I, I did all the math on it and go over um, how I came to that conclusion. I need to set all these up with commands and stuff in my my channels. Holy lag, what? See, this is this is why I don't want to push arena. This is like the most boring thing ever. You feel the game's laggy all day? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's up. My frame rate's not usually this bad. Ah, oh, we had an experience shrine. I should have grabbed that. All right. Yeah, let's make use of this experience shrine. If you didn't know, the XP shrine increases the amount of favor you get, so make sure you get good use out of your XP shrines. So we're at 496 right now for favor. We'll see. Holy lag. Alright, we killed like three of those rare enemies. We're almost 499. And the Nage, almost 500. 2 LP, ah, uh, feels bad though. Low roll. Uh, that's really painful. Nine int, I don't, I don't think is usable. I pretty much only slammed the, the good rolled uh, bases now. It's really hard to find upgrades at this point in the game. Hey, thank you for the follow. When am I going to come here in Europe? Um, I'll be in Europe in a month and a half. I won't be streaming though. But yeah, it's, it's, it's hard for me to stream any earlier. I, I already try and get off work as early as I can. I start work at like 6 in the morning and I try and finish work about like 1 in the afternoon. So it, it'd be very hard for me to work earlier hours than that. How do you squeeze all the loot together? You just open your loot filter, and then close it, and it groups them all up. You meant to live? Oh, uh, I don't know. How do you double portal? Uh, you just you just use the portal before the boss dies, and it'll it'll be the, the blue portal, and then you just go through that. The green portal after a boss always doesn't give you the chest, but the blue portal does. What time is it where I am? Uh, it is 3.40 p.m. right now. Where in EU? Uh, I will be in... Where will I be? I'll be in Germany, Hungary, Austria, Slovakia, Switzerland. I think that's it. One a.m. here. Yeah, that's super late. 1am is bedtime. 
Nice tour, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Europe is pretty awesome. Everything around here is really boring. So I'm always, always excited to get the chance to go to Europe. EU tour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could do it an EU tour. I've I've thought about moving to Europe before. It does seem pretty nice. I feel like the the work life balance is a lot a lot better in Europe compared to North America. And also you guys have the you guys have the good cheese as well. And the cheaper alcohol. Here cheese is like um like cheddar cheese, like plastic garbage. It's like fifteen to twenty dollars a kilogram. For like absolutely terrible cheese. It's it's so upsetting. Yeah, yeah, plastic, exactly. It's really, yeah. I need to, I need to smuggle cheese back when I go to Europe. You got the good bread too? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I was too busy eating the cheese. To notice the bread. Also, your your alcohol is like crazy cheap. I think it's like literally impossible to buy a bottle of wine here for less than like 10, 11 bucks. You'll love German and Austrian bread? Yeah, I bet. French, Italian, Dutch cheese are quite good. Um, was it the... Um, was the Dutch cheese... Um, it was Gouda, right? Am I remembering correctly? That was one of the ones I liked a lot. It's really hard to get that stuff here, though. We don't, don't get many opportunities to eat that. Here in Italy, every food? Yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the food in Italy. And also, I found Italy was, like, way, way cheaper. Italy is, like, significantly cheaper than where I live. Like, not even close. I was really surprised. You can get, like, an amazing pizza for basically nothing. Or like um, the the pasta with the the clams, the vongoli, I think. Uh, it's so good. You're moving to Europe from Tokyo. Nice. What takes you to uh, to Europe? If it costs less than ten dollars, it tastes like cheddar. If it costs less than ten dollars here, you can't even buy it. There's like like even even plastic is more than ten dollars here. If you like food, Canada is not a happy place to be. Gladiator helmet? Uh, I'm using the prismatic gaze. Eight euro per kilogram. 
That's pretty... that's pretty cheap for good cheese. I think if you were to buy anything here that's like good quality, it would probably be well over $30 a kilogram. It's all like imported and there's like tariffs and stuff. You lived in Toronto for a year? You only, only enjoy Italian food, nothing else. Yeah, it is, it is pretty good, to be fair. Pizza in Italy was born as a food for the poor. I think a lot of, like, really great uh, foods were, like, created as a food for the poor, and then they became popular. Twenty a kilo. Yeah, that's pretty. There's great food in Quebec. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think Quebec has more of a a unique like culinary culture than the rest of Canada. Pretty much everywhere else in Canada is just America, but colder. It's kind of sad. Lobster, yeah, you're right. Lobster was, was once a, a poor food. It was not even long ago. Uh, I grew up on the east coast of Canada. You could buy lobster for, for pretty pretty cheap, depending on where you were. Nowadays, it's uh, really expensive. Italian people still poor compared to nations. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean that's that's the thing when you're like traveling. If you're if you're coming from like a rich country, pretty much everywhere you go is gonna be really cheap. You're tired of living in a massive crowded city like Tokyo, you wanna move to a small city like Prague? Isn't isn't Tokyo like really uh like segmented? What's the word? Like like modular? Like a bunch of like separate mini cities i don't really know much much about it i just i thought it was like kind of separated into a bunch of cities i don't know if that makes sense but yeah i, I grew up in a town that had like fifty thousand people lobster is expensive now because the transport is difficult well I mean, yeah, lobster was, it used to be cheap regionally, but the, like, the external demand for lobster, even, even within the areas where they fish it, is, is up quite a lot. Great food, great mountains, great sea, great people. Yeah. Yeah, I really, I really liked going to Italy. Italy is a pretty great country. It's really beautiful, and also the the history too, like all the really old stuff. If you're into that, museums and all that. Every city will be calm after Tokyo. Probably right. I mean, it doesn't get much crazier than, than Tokyo, does it? All the really old stuff. I mean, everything is, is old stuff if you're from North America. When, when I was in Italy, I went to uh, Pompeii, where uh, Mount Vesuvius erupted. And there was like the whole ancient city there, like the old ruins. You don't you don't really have that sort of thing here in North America. It's it's such a like different experience. Was the right time to go? Yeah, I, I I went when the volcano was not erupting. 
So I, I guess it was a pretty good time. I didn't get turned into a uh, a cast like a mummy. You'll find it in America, but you'll also see gang tags painted. Uh, well, I mean, even, even America, like, America is extremely young compared to Europe. You don't really see stuff from, like, 2,000 years ago. I mean, like, not, not much. There's, like, some, some artifacts and stuff, but. Most of, like, the, the cities and stuff are hundreds of years old, if not younger. Everything is corrupted. Uh... I think I think a lot of a lot of countries or people would have similar opinions. I mean here in here in Canada people say the same thing about corruption. But I think most people around the world would say that it's not a very corrupt country. It's all just perspective, I guess, right? I think the travel is really good for for perspective, though. If you only only know your own country, it's sometimes hard to appreciate the the good things that you have at home. How do I not run out of mana? Um, mainly gift of winter. With extra casts, Gift of Winter, on average, recovers 21.6 mana, as long as you're casting 5 times per skill usage. So as long as your mana cost is, is somewhere around 22 or 23, you won't run out of mana. Population of 14 million for Toko? I thought Tokyo was like way more than that. Isn't it like 30 million? Eighth lightless with no core with no LP. Feels bad. No LP core today. You quickly realize how new the US is. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I mean, even, even if you, like, compare the east coast of North America against the, the west coast, like, everything is way newer here on the west coast. People are like, oh, this thing is old, and it's, like, 100 years old. It's kind of funny. What is the wand best in slot? Um, I don't think anything comes close to ladle. It's really hard to compete with... Um, in my case, 100% free cast speed. And a bunch of ailments that are all pretty good. Frailty is really good. That's DR, basically. Shred is good. More damage. It's like 48% more damage. The, the amount of like extra stuff the ladle gives is, is pretty huge. Anyone talking about corruption? They've never been in Russia. <laughs> Russia. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I've never been there, but I, I could see that. It's kind of hard to imagine that as like a North American. I know there's like a lot of propaganda and stuff. Like obviously Russia's the the opposition to the US or whatever. So they're always painted in a bad light. Would be nice to go there someday to see for myself. Dragrath is basically bait? No, I, I think Dragrath is a good item. 
I just think Layla is better for a late game. Do your videos on the build explain the rotation? Uh, there is no rotation. There, there's literally like no, no skill to this build at all. You just hold right click and then you spam everything else off cooldown. You, you don't have to worry about any of that. You can even numlock it if you want. Works for pushing 600, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a strong build still. If you have a high LP claw, you might as well use it. It's fine. It is a different build, though. Like you said. Yeah, you, you lose a lot of cast speed. You get so much cast speed from Ladle. Do I feel like trying out the Aegis variant at some point? Um, I, I might. I don't really have that much interest because it's only really useful for boosting up your boss damage a little bit. And I don't really have an issue with bosses. Hey Sky, what's up? And thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. Time to grind. Enjoy your grind. Hope you have a great night. As always, thank you for dropping in. You also need to hit 21 mana per gen. Yeah, 21 mana regen is, is actually pretty hard. That's multiple mana regen affixes that are not being used for something else. With my current setup, I don't need any mana regen on my gear. No LP static shell. Two LP rainbow edge, sure. We will take it. Five cast for Minrogen means holding cloth for five. No, 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 no. It's not five. It's not five direct casts. Like notice how when I use Frost Claw, you can see how it like does a bunch of stuff. Those are all the cast. Like you hold once, one right click is five cast. I guess is also twenty five percent less damage taken. Yeah, but it's only twenty five percent for the amount until it pops. So you, you have your, your Aegis, and then say you take like 20,000 damage, the 30% of your max life or whatever it is, so like in my case like 400, that's reduced by 25%, and then the other whatever tens of thousands of damage you take still goes through. At least that's how I understand it. I did some testing on it the other day, and it didn't seem that great other than bosses. Hey, thank you for the follow. Alright, this is a 14. My favorite streamer, let's go. Hey VR, what's up? Thank you for the kind words, I'm glad to hear it. You've been fooled? Yeah, I, I think Aegis might be a bit of a bamboozle. It has a niche for, well, you, you know, you know when it's good. You have the whole like boss killing setup. I think it's good for that. But all the bosses that give us any trouble, we can just unlock them anyway. And it's not like that setup will let you one shot high corruption shade, so you still need to run the stun lock. Yeah, I, I feel like it doesn't really provide that much value. Fools. 
Ladle, 1 LP. Feels bad. Never 4 LP. Your goal is to make a tank Aegis Hybrid with Static Shell. Hmm. How would you make the... How would you make the, the Aegis make you tanky though? Have I tried the Exiled Mage Farm? No, I haven't done that. I've been meaning to set that up at some point, but I've been lazy, I guess. It would definitely be useful for me, if I'm lacking ladles. I might do that in my Reign of Dragons timeline, since I don't need it anymore. <laughs> Run a few with you and drop the ladle. Yeah. Gotta trade some RNG. The last laugh. Oh, actually, I like that idea. You just equip the sword and then... Yeah, maybe. Maybe you're right. That sounds pretty smart, actually. I do have a 25. That's kind of annoying, I have to... Uh, I can't just right-click it, I have to actually unequip this. That's not too bad. Instantly kill enemies... Oh, by a melee attack. Do I even have a melee attack? Is that a mana strike? I guess, right? I guess I could just do Mana Strike. Hmm. That's not too bad. I could I could probably do that. I don't think it's really worth it yet though. Once I get it to 25, it's pretty much dead anyway. I like the idea, though. I might try it. I'll do some testing. Alright, where are we at? So we have four stacks. These are all 14, so I think we can go do that. All res is kind of annoying. Alright, let's grab our freeze setup. Let's see... Oh, what? Oh, I unequipped my Enigma, right? Forgot. It's like, why is my thing unspecced? Just for a dinner? Okay. Okay. Alright, uh, yeah, so let me do the uh, permafreeze setup on Shade now. What's our CDR? 98%. Yeah, for the swapping it sounds like a pain. I don't know if I like that. I need 85. You quit the game after you slammed your two 3 LP ladles and they both took the suffix. Oh no. Hey Chris, welcome back. Sorry to hear that. That's pretty rough. Oh, and you break a 2 LP heart too. And a 4 3 LP blaster. Oh no. Oh no, that's so painful. Oh no. Even just hearing that is, is painful. 
I don't like that. Yeah, I, I, I probably would be quitting too. Stay strong, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's a rough one. All right, let's see if we can do our setup correctly today. All right, we missed our timing. Because I took off my gear, I'm really squishy, so I can't actually tank the shade right now. So I have to leave if I mistime my attack. Okay, we got it. Still enjoy watching me play? Hell yeah. Thanks for dropping in. I appreciate that. You get to watch the super exciting shade fight. Everybody's favorite. Hopefully it doesn't bug out this time. Sometimes this boss can be annoying. Here you go. Fun stuff. You'd love to see the Frozen Orb build someday? What is the Frozen Orb build? Are you talking about Volcanic Orb converted to cold? Remember the day you had a group of trash spawn? Oh my god, that did happen. Yeah, you're right. That was really frustrating. Did I ever optimize my idols? No. I'm still using the same ones. So the nice thing about the setup is I can read chat while fighting Shade. Yeah, Orbis is, is pretty free. Real PP? Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. Static, Helm, Helm. Nah. I feel like Shade is, is kind of resenting me right now. We're cheesing the fight, dropping no LP items. Look at this. He spent 25 hours in rain. <laughs> Poor Bass, imagine someone is killing you while talking to people. <laughs> Can you imagine being like a 2300 corruption shade? Some guy just walks in on the phone. Yeah, you're right. That's pretty funny. It's a bad day to be shade. Actually, okay. There's way too much stuff here. I need to uh I need to move everything. I can't actually go through all this loot myself. One OP no. There we go, that's a little bit better. When it scrolls off the edge of the screen, it's so hard to deal with. You made different loot filters. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're right, that's a really good idea. I have, I have done that before. To like swap between the different filters. Yeah, that's pretty smart. I should be doing that, to be honest. Actually, why am I not doing that? You're right. 
That is way smarter than whatever stupid stuff I'm doing. Right, so hide all uniques and then we will do a show unique of type armor helmet Frostbite Shackle's good in this build. Uh, I don't think it's good for this one, but it's good for the Frostbite build. It's a different different version of the build. Or, actually, it's basically a different build. <laughs> Interested in join for the month? Uh, I don't think it's a great idea in this corruption. It, it, slows the, it slows it down way too much. So you add a bunch of HP. That's the that's the main issue. This my my damage is already a little bit low at this point. Alright, so we did the helmet. And then we can do one for Body armor. Isn't like 175? Yeah. Yeah, but that makes a pretty big difference. You saw how long it took me to kill Shade. Uh, so helmet, and we need... Boots. Wait, why... Oh, there we go. Yeah, this is much better. Morning Frost to LP. And then we do... Prism Wraps. One thing I've never actually dropped is a 3 LP Exsanguinous. Feels really unlucky. So many 2 LPs, probably like 30 of them. Alright, we're good. Fastest rank... Rank 10 strategies where you describe the cons of 1LP? Uh, no, I, I have a video specifically on 1LP prophecies. I forget what it's titled, but it, it, it should be in the thumbnail. It's like 1LP something. Uh... You can't drop 2LP, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Some of them seem unlucky. Yeah, thank thank you for the offer, Fabio. I'm probably probably gonna continue playing solo. I I think I understand the idea of like increasing the chance, but what I'm probably gonna do at some point is set up the the mage farm, and then if you want to join when I'm doing that, then that's that's fine. But for for now, just like pushing corruption and stuff, I. I don't really think it's worth grouping up. To infinity and beyond. Hell yeah. What's up, Cam? How's it going? Alright, fresh restart. 2366. Not bad.
Don't forget to set up one for everything else in case boss drops rings. Uh, yeah, you're right. I just, I'm only farming these three things right now, so I can just disable the all the filters for everything else. But yeah, I, I guess you're right. I might as well do that just to be safe. Yeah, okay. You got the 4 LP you don't need. Yeah, true, fair enough. I guess you don't. You already beat the game. Some dude had the worst 3 LP you've ever seen. You slammed it not even knowing what it was. Oh no, that's so painful. I've only dropped two 3 LP ladles. To consider not putting a good slam into it. It just hurts my eyeballs. That is not happy. Not a happy time. Sorting loot is a mini game, yeah. Yeah, it is a mini game. It's not a very fun mini game though, if I'll I'll be honest. Getting loot is fun, but then sorting loot is not fun. If I could just grab it all and have it like automatically sorted. I feel like probably 10 to 20% of my time playing the game is actually just dealing with loot. Either like going through loot that I drop, or uh, organizing my stash, or stuff like that. Like not actually playing the game. Oh, Exsanguinous. Oh, Exsanguinous, yeah. Yeah, 3 LP is insane. What are the odds? I feel like at this point with my XP bar, I probably hit level 100 like 10, 12, maybe 15 times. I don't know. Many times. And still having never dropped one. This feels really bad. Strand of Soul, yeah. Oh! Oh no. I knew I was gonna die there. I saw it, and I was like... Not able to move, and I was like, yeah, I'm dead. I saw my death coming for like... A solid five seconds. The Smoldering Lithrax. You saw I had like 20,000 ward, it didn't even matter. Those enemies are probably the, I don't know, probably the worst enemy to fight in the game. Literally harder to kill than Shade. I guess they're, they're easy to kill, just hard to not die to when you can't see the ground. Is the armor blessing that rare or you're unlucky? Uh, it shouldn't be that bad. But blessings are also a pain to farm. Let's keep going. Avoiding arenas as always. I think from now on, if I see the the smoldering Lithrax in a map, I might just immediately leave. It's just so hard to deal with them on this build when you can't see anything and then you just dash into them and instantly die.
Hey, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. Mainly anything with deadly ground effects. Yeah, th those ones especially though. Like those ones are by far the worst. It's not even close. Or anything that does damage over time. The uh, the eyeball enemies are actually pretty deadly at high corruption. Those uh, the beams that the eyeballs do. It does something like eight thousand damage to me per second. Which is enough to insta-kill basically any build. Especially when you consider how much DR I also have on top of that. Are there any replacement with less AoE but higher single target for this build? Um, I think the Frostbite setup might have been higher single target. I don't remember. I haven't actually played it, but I, I think that's what people are saying. If you want high single target, you can run the Lightning Agus setup. Um, some of the people in Discord were doing that. The problem is that the Lightning Agus gets popped while you're running Echoes, because everything's hitting you pops it. But while you're fighting bosses, you don't get hit very often. And with the Agus, you can get like 500% cast speed and a bunch of like Lightning damage and stuff on, on the Agus. And yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff you can get. But it's, it, I don't think it's great for running Echoes, though. You could probably swap up the Relic for something, too, for more damage. Like a 4LP Soulfire or something like that, or 3 or 4LP. Hello, the worst mobs for you are the Bats. Uh, yeah, the Bats are pretty bad, too. The... Shiver screen. Ooh. Look at that. I've literally gotten fewer of these T7 Frostclaw relics than I have 2 LP Twisted Arts. I have a special color just for this affix. There we go. That's our third. And it has a T4 spell crit chance, so I actually have to do a gamble. Are you freezing the shade? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I stunlocked the, the shade. That's like two to three hundred million on Merchant Guild. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. That doesn't surprise me. They're unbelievably rare. Right, here we go again. It feels weird how the the timeline bosses are so much harder than Shade in low corruption, and then so much easier than Shade in high corruption. It's like they don't even they don't even scale or something. Three LP strands, nah. Close, but not not quite.
Am I still running with Decree of the Burning Wind? What is what is Decree of the Burning Wind? I don't remember the names of everything. The Rune Master Tree? Alright, let me check. Oh, I I no, I'm not I'm not running this. I, I prioritized defense over this damage, because I, I felt like I didn't really need the damage. You could run this, though, if you're not having any issues with defense. It's fine. You can also run the uh, Runeward Inferno, but you have to change your skills around a bit to make it work. There's a few different options that you can do. Also, if, if you don't have crit cap, you probably should run the 12% uh, the crit chance nodes in the Rune Master Tree. I'm only not running them because I am crit capped. Really depends on what your gear looks like. Oh shit. Oh, I was not paying attention. I just stood right in the beam of that. Holy crap. Just face tank that whole damage over time. We cleared the echo though. How did you make cold, cold fire? Uh, am I cold, cold fire? I should be. This is cold. Yeah, it should be cold, fire, cold. Flame Ward is unspec, so it's fire. Snap Breeze is always cold. And then Flame Rush is converted with the uh, Snowball. So you get the Frost Guard here. You mostly die from the Spires. Yeah, the Spires are pretty bad. As long as you keep moving constantly through the map, then you generally won't get hit by them. It's only once you stand still. Even if you're not paying attention to them, as long as you keep moving. Kind of random, but I like how um, in my last stream, I think it was like an eight and a half hour stream or something like that. I only died a, a couple times in that stream, and the uh, the Twitch thumbnail for the stream was one of those deaths. Like of all of all the like eight plus hours of stream, it thumbnailed the the death. Getting trolled. Here's our mage. This is going to be our ladle. I can feel it. Here we go. 4 LP ladle. Let's go. Just kidding. Found a 4LP? 
A 4 LP ladle? Man, all you guys are running around with, like, better gear than I have. Am I, like, the only person who hasn't dropped a 4 LP ladle? Feels bad. It's okay. I got my luck elsewhere. I can't really complain. Even though, what are we at now? 1100 runes of research? I've killed a lot of... A lot of mages. Maybe someday the dream. You haven't drawn? Yeah, yeah, true. I'm sorry, Lotus. I didn't mean to... I didn't mean to dump on your luck. I know yours is worse than mine. Hey, thank you for the follow. You're not even using the ladle? It's just sitting there collecting dust. It's sad. Think of all of us poor boys out here that could be using that ladle. Or soft. At least I didn't miss three. No, that's true. I only missed one 3 LP slam on the ladle. To be fair, I haven't even done many 3 LP slams this season. I haven't had any slams that I, I could have missed. Hey, another follow, thank you, thank you. And another one. Just gonna keep on rolling. You missed about four three OP ladles before you hit cast. Aw oh, man. Are you merchant skills? Or did you actually like drop those? I'm pretty sure they're not actually that rare. So I think pre 1.0 I dropped a bunch of them. I've just been pretty unlucky with ladles. What's my current damage on the class skill without buff? Uh, like 20 something thousand, 18,000. Claw doesn't really do damage though. It's all about the spark charge. My spark charge has, uh, I think like 100,000 tooltip. Let's see. Yeah, spark charge is 110,000. These weren't LP, right? No. 100 million each. They're now 500 plus million. Oh, that's pretty... Yeah, that's more than an LP Twisted Heart, isn't it? They must be rare if people are pricing them higher than a, an LP Twisted Heart.
you're running the same build, your damage is like 3k. Um, I mean, my, my setup is pretty min-maxed, though, to be fair. I have uh, 203 intelligence with, uh, what's my crit multi? 381. Yeah, so that's probably a big part of the difference. When OP hearts go to 5 to 10, that's it? I thought hearts were, like, really expensive. I guess it's just late cycle, right? Everybody has... Everybody's already dropped their hearts or bought them or whatever. Now people are looking for the two LPs. I guess that makes sense. Your int is like 80? Yeah. Scaling int is, is really important for your damage. The int gives you, uh, it gives you cast speed, it gives you crit chance, it gives you uh, percent increased damage. It gives you flat damage. Gives you cooldown reduction. Uh, I forget what else. How much is a 3 LP heart? Are there any listed? Most expensive you're looking for is a 2 to 3 LP Blood of the Exile. Yeah, Blood of the Exile is really, really rare. I don't think I've ever dropped a 3 LP Blood of the Exile. Not even that many 2 LPs. Whatever skill you press, uh, no 3 LPs listed, never seen one. Apparently one of the devs dropped one. I think I think Muffin posted a screenshot. A little bit suspicious though. Keyboard, no problem. Whatever skill you press, it's always lightning cold fire. Um, yeah, so if you're not aware of how the runic invocation works, you need a mutable order. The runes you get are based on the order of the skills on your skill bar, and it's from left to right. So, whatever you have, um, the elemental. So for me, it's cold, then fire, then cold. So you probably have your frost cloud, which is lightning, on the left. So that's likely why you're getting lightning, cold, fire. You probably have like frost cloud, then flame rush, then flame ward or something. If you change the order around, it should fix it. And if you want to keep the same key bindings, you can go into your. Um, your controls input keys here and you can rebind them. So that'll yeah, exactly the skill bar order. Yeah. Sussy. Yeah it is it is sus. Yeah, no problem. I think that's probably like one of the most asked questions. Okay, we have the fire guys. I'm leaving. Let's try that again. Reroll. I hate those enemies.
No, no, I'm I'm not I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying it's like uh it's probably like the number one thing that's like not clear on. Cuz it's not immediately obvious that you need to set your skill bar. It's like a really weird mechanic. Uh, t towards the end of your eight hours, the frames were horrible? Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. That is a huge problem. And restarting does help. I think, I think they said there was a memory leak or something. Runic was supposed to be what made the class unique. Yeah, Runic is kind of just like a little utility that most of the Rune Master builds use. Kind of like an afterthought. Other than a few builds like Plasma Orb, which I think is pretty cool. Have you considered Fire Frost Thaw for the Immolator Belt? Yeah, I, I have considered it. There's a pretty big problem though. I'll, I'll show you after this. You saber the number just Oh, I forgot. I should be just hitting mine too. Yeah, I forgot to hide mine. Uh Yeah, that does help with lag. Really, Ryan? 2 a.m. here. Alright. You have a good night. Thank you for dropping in. OP Red Ring seller who asked for 10 billion is still. Did he did he sell it? Whatever happened to that guy? And how do you even trade 10 billion? Isn't the the cap the trade cap like 1.5 or something? Oh yeah, so the problem with the the fire the emulator belt. So you need to ignite yourself. And the issue with that. Where is it? Immolator. Yeah, so this gets you six spell damage per stack up to four to stack, so 240 flat fire damage. Pretty good. Chance to ignite yourself when you use a fire skill. The issue with Frostclaw is if you want to take Volley of Glass, you need to take this node here, which cleanses you per cast. So you, you end up removing all of your fire casts. And you can unspec this if you want but you lose quite a bit. And even, even without, I'm pretty sure the Immolator Belt was only direct cast. I, there was a lot of problems. I, I tried to make it work, but it, it just didn't seem that great. It's kind of unfortunate. I wanted it to work. Good for Divine Bolt Pally? Yeah, I, I heard it was pretty good for that setup. Trying to cook up some single turn. Yeah, I mean, if you if you manage to make it work, then let me know. I was trying to play around with that and figure something out, but it's uh, a bit of a challenge. I like the idea though. Or just the belt in general, I really like that belt. Offensive items like that that you can build around are pretty cool.
Ladle, here we go. Is this it? Please? Give me the ladle. Nope. Not today. These maps that are full of elites give so much favor. What? I feel like that, that echo gave us like 20,000 favor or something. We're at like 590. A lot of the interactions with self stuff don't work as expected. Bleeding heart keepers just to give. Yeah, uh, Perry Perry made a video on that recently. It was really interesting. He talked about all the different interactions that do and don't work, and I think it was pretty much only the the um, was it spirit plague or or something. It was only like one of the abilities that actually worked, and even the the Malin's hubris interaction. It didn't work with a lot of different things that it should work for. It's really disappointing. Pretty high hopes for that. Uh, Meteor Sork, I think. I think Dreadful might have had a guide on Meteor recently. Pretty sure it was it was Dread. I saw a video. Somebody made a video on Meteor Sork and it looked really good. There was some like new tech they were using to do um, to get a bunch of mana regen and it actually looked pretty strong. Meteor is such a fun skill though. You get that like big AOE explosion. Although if you like Meteor, I feel like you might as well just play Dive Bomb Falconer. It kind of feels like what Meteor should have been. A little bit sad that the, the bird does more damage smashing into stuff than a literal Meteor. Like, you would think a giant rock hurling towards enemies would, would do more damage than a bird. But I guess, I guess not. Oh well. What if it's a big bird? I mean, it'd have to be a pretty... Pretty big bird, wouldn't it? If you do the whole like energy calculation with like the mass and velocity and all that, like we're we're talking a pretty large bird. And like birds are birds are not very dense either, right? Like they have they have pretty low density. Their bones are like hollow or whatever. So the, the bird would have to be significantly larger than than the meteor. Big bird. Yeah, maybe. Someone around 4k with 
Meteor. That's pretty spicy. I like that people are, are pushing with unorthodox builds. That's really cool. I like to see that. It's nice to see people mixing up the meta. Especially now that we have like COF and Merchant's Guild, you can kind of try a bunch of different builds, getting items a lot quicker. I feel like the game's in a pretty, pretty fun spot right now, even though there's a lot of bugs. Is that build on YouTube? Uh, if it is, I haven't seen it. But if you have a link, feel free to send that my way. That sounds pretty cool. I feel like this timeline has a lot of eyeballs. It took me forever to proc the eyeball prophecies in the Reign of Dragons. Now it seems like they proc all the time. You want to change the order scope? Yeah, 100%. I agree. That's so annoying. I can't even tell you how many times I've, like, swapped gear or even, like, took gear off and then put it back on. And then my skill tree is all messed up. Or when I do the um, the stun lock setup with the with the snap freeze, I put on the amulet that gives me plus one level of snap freeze, and then I don't even I don't even allocate it because otherwise, when I take the amulet back off, it removes the wrong skill point. Like that, that should probably not be like that. Thank you for the follow. When I'll be static. Feels bad. Yeah, like like I was saying for the um, for the frostbite setup. When I do the shade of Orbis, I swap in the um, frozen heart, which gives me plus one level to snap freeze, and I would like to put that point into the tree. But the problem is when I take the necklace back off it takes a different point back out. Like, it doesn't take the last allocated point. It takes, like, uh, uh, there's some order that determines how it takes it, but it, I'm pretty sure it's always freeze duration, which bricks the setup. So then I need to re-level it. I need to unspec the point that I added last, re-level, and then respec this point again. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. But yeah, that's that shouldn't work that way. I don't know how they would deal with that. Maybe they make it so that like if you if you take an item off that gives you plus levels, it like forces you to move the points around manually before you can use the skill again. Like the skill is disabled. Uh, like for example, it could say like level twenty two out of twenty one. And then it's like uh, disabled until you remove the extra point, and then bam, way better uh, user experience. Yeah, you you can't get boss items exactly as uh, as Pad said there. That is pretty sad. Co-op is dog. Yeah. Yeah, I think co-op has never really been the highest priority. But you also have to consider this game has been uh, offline only for most of its history. Multiplayer is still somewhat recent. 
and I, I think it has come a long way. But yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of work they could still do to make it better. I think in general, though, a lot of ARPG players just play exclusively solo. They probably have the data on that, for how many people try and group. Although also a lot of people probably don't play in a group because of how bad the experience was. Even as a new player, is knowing to change gear and break your build. Yeah, yeah. The it's even worse. It's even worse while you're leveling, because you don't immediately respec. It takes like five minutes to get that skill point back once you respec it. Made a Stranisol one LP, one reduce. You got lightning. I mean, lightning damage is. It's it's not a dead stat. It could have been worse, right? It might be easier to get the reduced bonus damage taken from crits on your other pieces of gear. I don't think getting it on the belt is completely necessary. One LP ladle, come on. Come on, game. You got cold, Razu. Your wife and wife and I play games together. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could see that being pretty frustrating. I see where you're coming from. Hundred percent. Cold res on yours. You think cooldown is the best for the belt? Yeah, I, I think cooldown is probably the best because you can get the reduced crit damage taken elsewhere. All of our affix slots are pretty valuable though. T7? Yeah, T7 cooldown. If you could get a T7 on the belt, you wouldn't need to swap out your belt when you do the uh, the stun lock, which would be a pretty nice quality of life. And it's also a generally good affix too, because you get more flame rushes, which gives you some ward. You get more snap freezes, you get more flame ward, and you get more runic. All of these give you a bunch of ward. So, it's cooldown is not bad either. You don't seem to have a transport skill. Uh, Flame Rush is your is your transport. For you, it's already better than Diablo. Yeah, I I agree. I have a lot more fun in this game than I do playing Diablo. I feel like with how absorbed I've been in Last Epoch the last couple months, there's been so much Diablo news, and I I haven't even read any of it. It just hasn't interested me. Normally I'd be like reading all that stuff, but I just can't be bothered. This game is just too much fun. Must be using... Um, if you're just tapping it, it, it doesn't work like Teleport. Like, Teleport, you just tap it, and then it, it takes you where you want to go. With Flame Rush, you actually have to hold it. It's a, it's a channeled skill. So you, you might be doing that. Um, trying to use it like Teleport.
some scary damage over time from those uh, soul tube enemies. Soul cage. Can you somehow disable hint switch buttons to press on Skobar? Uh, I don't know. I know you can you can disable the UI with the delete button. I don't know about the hints. You mean the, the extra info? Wait, hold on. These skills give mana efficiency with in I've never noticed that before. 400% mana efficiency. Huh. What's the top two party affixes for weapon? Cast speed and probably spell crit. I think almost all of our items are double prefix priority, most of them. Why does my health go up and down? Um, it goes down because of Twisted Heart, it's converting health to ward. And it goes up because of leech here. Lightning damage, leech. Yeah. Yeah, you guys got it. Uh, will you progressively get more as long as you're following the build? Yeah, you, you will. Int gives you a lot of ward. You can see I'm at 203 int. As you get more int, you get more cast speed. And you get a bunch of ward on hit. So this gives you a lot. You also get more ward retention. You can see I'm at 883 ward retention. You, uh, what else? You get ward on crit. So as your crit chance goes up, you get more ward. And the passives you get also give you a bunch of ward. There's mana spent gained as ward. Basically everything gets you ward, so you'll you'll just stack up an insane amount of ward eventually. PoE was too complicated for me. You had no time to play. Yeah, yeah, I think PoE was like extremely time consuming if you want to get anywhere in the end game. I agree. I was definitely one of the people who did put the time in and, and grinded it, but it just felt kinda of bad that I I felt obligated to grind, and over time I think PoE just stopped being fun for me, so I stopped playing. I still think PoE is a, is a good game, it just, I don't know, it stopped being fun. Can play for a bit? Oh yeah. Enjoy your uh, enjoy your build. Thanks for dropping in. To see if we can get to twenty five hundred corruption tonight would be very nice. The worst part for you for Piri was the same build were always good. Yeah, I think that a lot of the like seasons it was just like three seasons in a row of the trapper build or whatever being the best or minions builds just dominating everything or whatever. I did find it was like kinda like that, yeah. I always tried to sort of break the meta in PoE, except for the few weeks where the meta was just like insane. 
then I just enjoyed that. Like the uh, Herald stack league, I did a lot of that. Is Twisted Heart the only piece that drops? Uh, Twisted Heart drops only from the Ren of Dragons boss. Strand of Souls only drops from the Abomination. Ladle only drops from the Mage. And I think that's it, unless I'm forgetting anything. But generally, you're, you're going to want to pick one timeline as your main timeline, get all the other blessings, but then just farm. Personally, I would, I would recommend the um, Rain Dragons as your primary timeline until you get your Twisted Hearts. And then you can consider switching. Oh, what the hell? Oh, I didn't build up my ward first. Uh, that was a mistake. You don't need... Yeah, you don't need it. It's not mandatory. Especially if you're not high corruption. Passives in the unique belt, yeah. That's probably enough, to be honest. You can get a bit more if you want for a little bit more defense, but it's definitely not mandatory. Damn, these damage over times are doing so much damage, what? Can you get the random drop from any timeline? Yeah, you can. It's only the boss drops. I know Last Epoch Tools says that you should target items in a certain timeline, but it it's uh, not correct. You don't need to worry about any of that. Uh, so we need a little bit more stability. The shades are so annoying, yeah. We're at 2478, very nice. Yeah, the shades are definitely really annoying. They're just kind of time consuming. So how much health they have. You can kind of like grab a bit more damage in your setup. But it's still, they're still really tanky. Even if you do end up getting a lot of damage, you end up just proccing the boss DR anyway. If you're not one-shotting it. Buggy OP boss, yeah. Yeah, it can be pretty buggy sometimes. I find Shade also has some damage over time abilities that don't always... Um, they don't always show a visual effect. Like sometimes the it'll put the DOT down on the ground and it's invisible. And the problem is like at this corruption, the damage over time is due like 20,000 damage a second. So you, you if you can't see them, you're basically screwed. I need to full clear this one, so that I get enough stability. Should you consider Strand of Souls with 80-200%? Um, it's probably it's probably fine, but if you have a really good Exalted, especially the armor base, if you have like a Praetorian belt with um, like CDR and some other good stats, then it's probably going to be better than a low LP 
or a zero LP low roll. It just depends on whatever gives you the most defense. Armor belt is pretty strong too. Hey, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. And we get the stability. Let's go. Another boss. Another boss, another belt. Maybe. I don't know why those modifiers always bug out. Because, like, three of them. Makes me wonder if they're actually applying multiple times. Alright, here it is. I feel it. 2 LP belt. Here we go. Feeling lucky. No LP belt. So we have the 12. Do I go further or do I just do this? I don't really have to backtrack that far. I can keep going. Yeah, I only have to do an arena here. It's not that bad. Yeah, I think we'll go for four shades. I find it is generally best when you're in these arenas to just sit at the bottom of the map because you have the most visibility looking up and then just hold right click. Just sit here and hold right click. Not that arenas are that challenging anyway, but... You know, at least check for XP shrines. No XP shrines. Pro strats for the win. Hey, Red Wave, what's up? You never do four, you just keep the fourth. You still have the three? Yeah, I, I tend to push a little bit further if I only have like a 10 or a 12 shade. I'll see if I can get like a 16 shade. Because the, the further echoes give you more stability anyway. The close ones, uh, I think they go up to like 86 stability. And the further ones go like 150. So even though it is diminished the amount you get from each shade, you still get them way faster. 
And also, you have to kill Shade less often, and Shade is pretty tanky, so I feel like it might be more efficient. I'm not I'm not completely sure on that. It's like, the Shade fight itself is, takes the same amount of time as me doing, like, five Echoes. You're hoping for a big loot explosion this weekend. You've been stacking. Let's go. How much favor are you stacking up? I feel like there there probably is like a mathematically optimal way to do the the shades. But I'm not I'm not really sure. There's a lot of variables. Maybe it is better to just always grab the first shade you see, but I'm, I'm not not convinced. So then I feel like you end up wasting a lot of free... Uh, some of the like further echoes. Free stability, free boss skills. Do the ten, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I'm not sure if anybody's actually like run the numbers on it. It also depends too, if if you're trying to farm the boss drops. Then I think pushing further um, echoes is better because you get to fight the boss more often. But if you don't really care that much and you're more focused on corruption, then I think your strategy will be slightly different. Let's see if we get any good ones here. We have a 10 here, 12 here. They're kind of not great. I would like a 2 LP belt, so I'm not opposed to getting more boss skills. It's fine. Still only have a 1 LP. Pretty good roll, though. Oh, this is a double damage echo. This is pretty rippy. Doesn't seem too bad, actually.
These soul fires are what I heard was the um, if you want to increase your damage. I heard the uh, soul fire relics were a pretty good alternative to twisted art. Going to sleep. Have a good night. Yeah, you have a good night, Fabio. Hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for dropping in. Hanging out. This one's only a nine. We can go a little further out here. Out we go into the abyss. Where do the crystals come from? That's from the prism, prismatic gaze. Oh, rip. Uh, oh, the bitter wing, no. Those ones are pretty rough. Do we do it again? Eh, maybe not. I don't think it's worth it. Let's just do shade. What are the mods, anyway? Damage, move speed, okay, fair enough. Alright, it's shade time. There we go. Thanks, Very exciting fight here. High quality content. Could probably spec and do a bit more damage actually. I think I have too much defense. We're just gonna stun lock anyway. Any goodies? 12 int. Blood of the Exile? Okay. So we lose. How do you do it to the, get the items come closer? I just open up the filter and close it. Just double tap real quick. 
and it groups them all up. I also have a filter for the specific types to make going through them a bit easier. So otherwise it's... Oh, 3 LP. Criterion. Otherwise it's a pain. Where can we find your loot filter? I'll link it in one second. Once I go through all this fun stuff. Helmets. Uh, we'll do. We'll do hide. Yeah, I'll make one filter that hides everything else. I guess. Just an axe. Alright. Okay, what are we at now? 2405, not bad. Uh, yeah, let me link my loot filter real quick. There. That should be my current filter. It's also in my guide. I put my cheat sheet in there. Hopefully that helps. Alright, where to next? Might be able to get 2500 tonight. That'd be pretty cool. Another tip if you're curious if you go in your stash and you uh, right click one of the tabs and then click OK, that will be the tab that opens up next when you close your tab and reopen. All you have to do is right click it and then click OK. Thank you for the follow. When do you spec into static shell? Um, you you don't really have to. Oh no, it's the smoldering lithrax. You don't really have to spec into static shell if you don't want. We have a guy in in my Discord that's at three thousand corruption using unstable core. Have you tried using Last Laugh? Um, yeah, you can use Last Laugh. We we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, it's it's an option. It's just kind of annoying to do the swap. But yeah, you, you definitely can do it. It's annoying because I have to unequip my catalyst, and then I have to swap the two hand, and then taking off the ladle screws up my skills because it's um, it gives me points here, so that's kind of a pain. So yeah, I don't I don't really like the swap. Been watching for a while, just forgot to hit follow. That's cool. Yeah, I always, I always appreciate the follows. Uh, can we get the seal? 
No. Alright, we have another boss. What's the benefit of Static Shell versus Core? Uh, benefit is the Static Shell gives you a like a 2.5 to 2.8 times armor multiplier. So the, the shell makes you extremely tanky, and it also has a more damage multiplier on it too. Core gives you a bunch of mana, and it gives you some percent damage. Uh, and it gives you plus level. They're both good though. If you rarely die, there's no reason to swap. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I do think that you can pump out more damage with shell because of the more multiplier. But it's it's not really uh, it doesn't really matter. They're both they're both pretty good. There's a few other options too, like Prism Wraps is also good. Core of the Mountain is also good. I think there's there's a handful of chess pieces that you could use. Probably even an Exalted, maybe, depending on what you get. Oh, you're playing hardcore with the build. I feel like hardcore with this build is kind of scary, because when you first enter, enter the Echoes, you don't really have a whole lot of ward built up. And if you... if you misplay, then that can get you killed pretty, pretty easily. Does Criterion do anything? I don't think so, but we can we can check. I do have a couple three LP criterion, so uh, okay. So it gives us mana spent gained on ward armor and ward decay. It's a pretty good base type. It gives more damage while using a wand for invocations, so none of that helps us. More damage per strength for invocations. Thank you for the follow. Uh, yeah, so all this more damage is for our invocations. I don't think this is actually useful. It's a good base type. And the plus three runic is okay. But otherwise, I don't think it gives us any value. Hey! I'm not actually sure how to pronounce that. Tenabras? Welcome back. Yeah, I saw you on the on the YouTube stream before. I see you're on the on the Twitch during the dark side now. Yeah, I, I just recently started the the multi stream. What are the stats on your glove? These are my gloves. I'm using them because it is uh, um, twenty int. So this is like probably one of the best you could get, and it also has shred, which we don't need that much shred. We're pretty deep into diminishing returns already, but it, I guess it's a slight bonus. I got it right? Hell yeah. Let's go. That's a hard one. Alrighty. Grab the XP tomes. Not that they matter that much anymore. Two F, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much like an exclusively COF player. You can see all the. Hey, Valtteri, what's up? Welcome back. Good evening. Thank you, and good evening to yourself. You guys are just in time for the corruption grind to uh, start up again. I feel like most days I just don't have any time at all to push corruption. It's always nice when we can get a good climb in for a day. 
You're trying merchant code? I imagine this build is probably pretty hard to, to do as Merchant Guild starting out. So it is pretty meta, so a lot of the items are, I imagine, expensive. Unless you have a lot of gold. But yeah, how's, uh, how's your character coming along so far? Can probably get like one or two LPs for pretty cheap though, I imagine. Just the higher than that's probably where it gets expensive. Thank you for the follow. I oh, already finished this. Let's go. Two or three LP aren't that bad? Oh, okay. I guess it probably depends on what you're looking for. 2LP twist star is probably pretty pricey, I would imagine. Static shell and boots and all that, they might be achievable? I don't know. I'm not actually familiar with the prices. You slam very good rolls. Nice. Yeah, getting the getting the rolls on your legendaries, especially the int, is really important for this build. Everything else is kind of like not that important, but the int you really need the slam. I guess you don't you don't need it, but you want to push corruption. Thank you for the follow. A two LP heart is one billion. Oof. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty rough. One billion, yeah. And another one, thank you for the follow. Welcome to all you guys, to the crew. We'd be blasting tonight. Kind of makes me wonder if, if you weren't Merchant Guild from the start, would this build be harder to gear as as uh, Merchant Guild now? Probably not, right? Because like the starter gear is really cheap. It's just the like high end stuff that costs a lot. You think Merchant might be the way long term? Mm, probably. Probably, yeah. I would imagine. If you're somebody who like puts a lot of time into the game and is like a, a big grinder, then I do think Merchant Guild wins. And even if you're not, depending on what build you want to play, I think Merchant Guild could still win. Any like niche build that like isn't isn't meta, you're gonna find all your LPs for for a pretty pretty low amount of gold. The problem is when you want the same gear as everybody else, then it starts to get expensive. Starting gear is billions. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty rough. Grinding with merch guilds about the same. Yeah, I, I guess I would imagine it's you're kind of doing the same things, but you're just listing everything that's half decent on the market instead of dumping it in my stash and never using it again. LP red ring, for example.
How much would uh how much would these rings go for in Merchant Guild, you know? The T7 in red rings? I figure they're probably a lot, right? I don't know if those would be achievable. There's, there's definitely a lot of people that are trying to farm those. Gold cap? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of figured. But also, like, just dropping those and slamming those in Merchant Guild? You'd have to be insanely lucky. Hey, Soul Unicorn, what's up? Oh, and I'm dying, not paying attention there. Welcome to the chat, you just started playing a few days ago. Welcome to the game, hope you're enjoying it so far. It's definitely one of my favorite games of all time already. Holy lag, what? Damn, those fire enemies give me so much frame lag. These poison spires are also extremely deadly, those are DOTs. You just hit 100. Uh, still no red ring. Oh man. Yeah, red rings are rare. If you have runes of ascendance, you can drop some of those on. Try and get a red ring. Uh, I'm just trying not to die here. Those fire things. You got up to chapter 8, then you had to restart. What made you restart? Did you not, uh, didn't like your build? Didn't like it? Yeah, fair. You have 300s and no red ring? To be fair, on the topic of red rings... On the topic of red rings... Uh, where's my red rings? Yeah, so the, these are my red rings. And for context, uh, so when when you hit level 100, you can level up again to 101, but then the bar resets, and the amount of experience to go from 100 to 101 is equivalent to leveling to 103 times. And this bar, for me, has probably filled up about 10-ish times, so that's equivalent to like, I don't know, like 30 level 100s or something. And of all of these red rings, of all of these red rings, only, I think, one was not from a prophecy. And it did happen to be LP, by the way. All the other ones were... Every single other one of these was from a prophecy. So yeah, the, the red rings are extremely rare. I couldn't imagine trying to farm for them not as COF. It's just not going to happen. Unless you just get really lucky. It's really, really absurd. But I guess one of the perks of COF is that you can actually target items like that. Coming from other games. Someone said there's a way to skip... Um, yeah. You can skip parts of the campaign using the dungeons. So, for example, if you go through this part of the dungeon, it'll progress you. 
Uh, there's a few skips. I forget where they all are. Here's another one. So if you go through here... Oh, I didn't mean to actually right-click it. Oops. Oh, and we DC'd. But yeah, if, if you go through the dungeons during the campaign, it'll skip you ahead. Hello, game? That was kind of weird. Thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, so what the prophecy does, let me show you real quick. Do you go for the guaranteed LP prophecy? Um, I actually made a video on that specifically. And... Let me first show what the prophecies do. So this is what the prophecies do. You do a thing, an event, and then there's a condition. Let me see here. It's so like here is like monolith corruption, and then you get a reward. And then all of the COF bonuses, they uh, work on this reward. And then rank 10, everything you drop from a prophecy is duplicated. So you can drop like 40 uniques from a prophecy. Do you have to do the campaign to unlock everything? No. You just have to unlock end of time and then you can start doing monoliths right away. Uh, oh yeah, let me show the... Hold on, let me show my spreadsheet. Uh, okay, so I did a spreadsheet on... LP. Where is it? Prophecy. Ah, here it is. Yeah, okay, so this is my spreadsheet on the LP prophecies. And basically, I calculated the favor cost efficiency of the LP prophecies compared to the non LP prophecies for each uh, LP level. And most of the items cannot actually drop from prophecies, so the most efficient item that you could target farm with prophecies for LP would be the Ravenous Void, and it's only 46% cost effective using the LP versus the non-LP. So basically, TLDR, LP prophecies are extremely bad. Never do them. They're, they're absolute trash. Uh, let's go back. Where were we here? Yeah, that was that was one of those things that uh, I think a lot of people were asking. So I, I had to do the, the whole spreadsheet thing for that one. It's pretty good to know, though. I think in, in my video, I, I said they had to reduce the cost of those prophecies by, like, 65 to 70 percent for them to be viable which i i don't know if they're gonna do but they did say they're making changes you have to do the campaign to get all your idle slots and passives yeah yeah exactly and then if you complete the whole campaign at the end you also get plus one attributes so like here you see vitality strength whatever when you complete the campaign fully you get plus one. It's it's not super high priority though. I, I'm pretty sure on this character I actually completed the campaign after I was already level 100. It's, it's not that important. Yeah, now you just need to get leveled. Uh, you probably want to run the Monoliths in End of Time. Oh shit, these things do so much damage. Oh, it's double damage. 
Okay, fair enough. No wonder everything's hitting so hard. Build. Uh, give me one second, I'll link you the build. The problem with the damage affixes on these uh, high corruption monoliths is you can see it says enemies have 2765% more damage. Whoa. The 20% uh, increased damage is actually multiplied by all of that. So the monsters actually have like uh, 4000 something percent. It's probably like 45 times more damage. Pretty hard to deal with. One LP ladle. I remember to turn off these, but yeah, I did. Alright. Yeah, sorry, give me one sec. This is a really rippy map. How fast is bossing with this build? Uh, Shade is pretty slow. Well, I mean... Shade is slow at 2500 corruption, to be fair. This map is insane, what? It's just full of elites that do damage over time with double damage modifier. Only the bug builds are faster, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I did see the video of that, yeah. Uh, okay, let me link my... Here. Uh, I put together a spreadsheet on the build. This is the... Um, this is basically the written guide version of the build. It goes over all the different uh, resources I've made available, the affixes you want, the uniques you want, idols, blessings, all that stuff. So, yeah, I'll link that in the chat for you. The guide is there in the resources section. The video guide, if you want that. That was probably the hardest echo I've ever done. As far as difficulty.
9, 6, 15, 17, 18. Four, four, and four is twelve, and six is eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We need one more, and we brick. We didn't make it. What is my real life job? Uh, I work in web development. I write software, basically. How about yourself? Uh, this is another rippy map. Uh, got the double damage and mark for death, which will reduce my resist. You were guessing accounting? <laughs> Honestly, I thought about it. Accounting sounds really interesting to me. If I wasn't in software, that's probably where I would be. Back end or front end? Uh, I'm full stack, so both. Your project manager. Okay. In in tech. I don't know if other. Other fields, I guess other other careers probably have project managers, right? Not really too familiar with uh, what all the role does. I'm your lucky charm. You dropped a prismatic case with one LP, and you hit the T7. Let's go! Congrats. That's awesome. Love to hear it. Construction. Oh, that type of project. Okay. I was totally thinking, like... I guess it's kind of the same idea, right? We both have builders and we both have planners. You just happen to be a planner. And I'm one of the, the builders, I guess, right? Have I ever had any multi T7s? Yeah, I, I have a handful of multiple T7s somewhere. They drop somewhat often. I think in, in theory you could probably get four T7s. I've never seen it, but it, it should be possible. Probably rarer than four LPs by quite a bit though. Do they only drop at extremely high corruption? I don't think so. They're just rare. I have a filter specifically for exalts with multiple... or uh, items with multiple exalted affixes, so I see them. If you don't have a filter for them, you might not even... 
might not even notice. Ah, uh, the Lithrax. There we go. Yeah, let me let me check my stash. Alright, uh, so multi is double T7, T67, T67. Uh, where's all my double T7? There's one. There's another one. Yeah, there's a handful of them, I guess. There's a double T76. Double T7. So it's not bad. Yeah, they're pretty rare. Thank you for the follow. Should I switch to the different builds so you can level your skills sooner? Um, if you're in the leveling process right now, I would say to not switch over all your skills at once. Otherwise, they're going to be really low while you re-level them. But typically... The further you are in the game, the quicker you'll re-level your, your skills. I feel like it should be the opposite, but... It's not, so... You see the dark purple items, that's my filter for the multi-exalt. Do you know what build you want to, to switch to? Respect could be much worse. Remember how it is in D2? I've never actually played D2. It's like the, the most sacrilege thing I could possibly say in an ARPG game. I was too busy playing RTS games when Diablo 2 came out. Uh, Bishawa, how does it feel around 500 corruption? Is it low damage on bosses? It's not too bad. It's definitely not high damage. It feels okay, though.
Paladin is oh your paladin. Um Yeah, I I think that's it's fine. It's probably to I don't know why switching to a different build so you can level your skills sooner. Hmm. Oh, Healing Hands. Yeah, Healing Hands Paladin is really strong. I think what I notice a lot of new players do when they start is they just... Uh, they they end up making a bunch of characters over and over. And then they, they never really get far into the game. And a lot of the like faction stuff and, and good gear drops and everything comes pretty late into the game. So like your your COF or your Merchant Guild, for example, a lot of the experience is like based on how much actual experience you get. So if you never get to like level 100 or high 90s, you're probably not getting enough experience to really progress. And then the, the empowered monoliths too, a lot of good loot comes from that. So I think it's generally important, like just find one build that you think is okay and take it into endgame. And then from there, you're going to get a bunch of bonuses and loot and whatever that you can use for your other characters. But yeah, I, I do think that the Fisher Warlock is pretty solid around 500 corruption, at least mine is. It feels it feels good. It's definitely not like insanely overpowered or anything, but why do you sometimes get stuck with two stacks of unsealed mana? Uh, um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure why that would happen. I think that that Healing Hands Paladin is probably probably one of the top builds right now as well. If you like to play strong builds, then it's definitely a good choice. You have zero mana on the tooltip. And persists. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. I've never had that happen, as far as I know. It might be something you have equipped, or something you're specced into on your passives, maybe? Is there a build recommended for you? Um, I'd say just, like, watch YouTube videos of different builds, see what you think looks fun. Keep in mind that the the videos that people are posting are going to be vastly different in strength depending on the gear that they have. Like a very weak build with good gear can can look strong. So just pay more attention to like how it looks like it performs mechanically and how you think you would enjoy that. You could also just grab one off of Max Roll, they're not too bad either. The difference between S tier builds and non S tier builds is massive. Yeah, I, I agree. I do think it's like not even close. Fisher has a few variants, 2k plus corruption. Yeah, I, I think that you can you can still do the minion eating setup with the I think you can still do that with Bone Prism. What do you think is the best three player comp with this build? Uh I don't actually know if this build lends itself to team play much. You'd have to... I don't know. It, I don't think this build is great for, for team play. Because it doesn't really provide a huge amount of DPS. It's not a good damage dealer. It doesn't really provide that much party buffing. I don't think it's a good support. 
you have the stun lock, I guess, which is not bad, but I, I don't know. I don't think it's like, I don't think it's an S tier player party play. You'd probably find something better. Three rune masters. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's your party. I think uh, the curse put out a video on a high damage warlock. I forget if it was Fisher, but he did it with the emulator's belt, if I'm remembering correctly. Holy lag. Build all uses red equipment. Uh, yeah, the red equipment is legendaries, and most most of the end game variants of builds that you're gonna see are gonna be majority legendary items. That's a, a main part of the end game crafting system is making legendaries. The curse, yeah. Yeah, the, the Curse has a lot of videos on Warlock. If that's your thing, then definitely check out his channel. That's probably, I, I think, like the number one source for uh, Warlock stuff right now. How do you get them? How do you know what's equivalent until you do get them? Uh, I think you should probably follow a guide for that until you understand the, the different items a little bit better, because there's, there's kind of a lot of stuff going on. It's pretty hard to know everything until you've done like a full endgame playthrough. Unless you kind of just want to like play around and figure stuff out on your own, that's an option too. Ravenous Void, okay. Avarian is cheap and solid all round. Yeah, you can you can do you can do low life uh torment fisher and it's pretty pretty strong. There's definitely YouTube guides. Uh I might be able to link it. I don't know. Let me see if I can find. This might be it. I just grabbed what looks like the correct build. I'm now plugging other people's content in my stream. Like a true professional. But yeah, that, that should be a good guide there. Uh, this is Spire map. Should you make a different character? Uh, I mean, if, if you want. Did you link it? I linked it in the Twitch stream. I can link it. I linked it on Twitch, yeah. I can link it on YouTube as well. Wait a sec. Yeah, if, if you want to try that build, then definitely go ahead and try it. But as, as I was saying before, I think the main thing to like look out for is, is like build, build FOMO. Whatever build you're playing, you're always going to see another more endgame build that looks better than your build. Yeah, 
Like none of none of the builds are gonna feel that great until you actually put the time into making them good. No, that link is for your wait, hold on. Oh, actually wait, never mind. I, I did link it in the wrong chat, sorry. Yeah, that link was meant for YouTube. There we go. Drive by. Hey. As always, Erwin coming in clutch. Thank you. The best kind of drive by. I would kind of like to hit 2500 corruption tonight, and then maybe, maybe we can call it a night after that. You have a lot of work to get done. Yeah, sorry, sorry to confuse you, Unicorn. That was that link was for YouTube. I linked you a warlock build. Are you gonna push this one as high as you can? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'll push it as as long as I'm having fun doing so. I don't think 3,000 should be a problem. I'll just keep going until it's not fun anymore, I guess. need to spend my favor. We're gonna be at favor cap pretty soon. Need to go eat some of that. A bunch of these are actually I don't I don't think they I don't think these are gonna get done. Siege Golem does not spawn in this timeline. I don't think Diamond Matron does either. Let me check. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think these monsters spawn in this timeline, so I have to do a different one. Hey, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. You're looking through builds and you don't know what's different in them or what they're good for. Yeah, I, I guess maybe this a starting point would be to use the uh, Max Roll website, and they do have a tier list. I don't think it's like the the best thing in the world, but to get started, it might help you get an idea. And tier lists are always a little bit questionable, but definitely start with that. Uh, we can push out here. Yeah. 
Yeah, the Maxwell tier list. So I think un until you have a better idea of like what you like or what you're looking for specifically, then maybe just go with a, like a generic tier list that'll tell you like what builds are good at what, what their strengths and weaknesses are. And then you can decide if you want to focus on like clear speed or single target or tankiness or whatever. Whatever you find most fun. You don't know what you want. I don't know. That one I cannot answer for you. I think just try some different ones, try some different classes, and see what you enjoy. There's a lot of different playstyles in this game. Each class feels pretty different. Got another boss. Falconer is pretty fun. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Falconer is pretty fun. You like going fast and doing a lot of damage. Was Warlock talking about what you were talking about earlier? Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about Warlock. You kind of just like drop a thing on the ground and it shoots out a bunch of little spirits and they do a bunch of damage over time. It's a pretty low, low effort gameplay, I would say. It's pretty tanky, moderately high damage. Clear speed is not bad. It's a pretty good build. Boonga boonga. Through that, Oonga Boonga the boss. 3 LP Ribbons of Blood. Interesting. That is not the boss drop I wanted 3 LP of. What is it I'm playing? I'm playing Frostbite Rune Master. If you want this build, I have all the information about it in this Google Doc here, including my video build guide, salute filter, uh, build planners, priority affixes, items, etc. Basically everything you need to know about this build is in that Google Doc. Is this the one? Wait, what? Oh, I chattered it. Oops, that's not what I was going for. Does this actually work with a sealed affix? Hold on. Oh, it does! I didn't realize it could actually be sealed, the, the affix you need. Nice. It's a terrible roll. 
Yeet. We made a fractured crown. Thought I was Spark, not Frostbite. I'm not Frostbite. This is not a Frostbite setup. What was the one you said you put a thing down and it shoots spirits? That's Chthonic Fisher. That's a Warlock. It's a pretty good build, if that's something that you like. It does a lot of damage over time. The spirits inflict it with ailments. Sign up for the Discord. Yeah, feel free to ask any questions in the in the Discord. We have a questions channel. Not a problem. Thanks for dropping in. Hope you have a good night. I think I'm probably gonna have to go soon. But before I do end up going, I would like to do a large raid. I haven't really been able to do a big raid before. probably have time for one more shade and then if you guys are up for it I'd like to do a big raid on Perry the Pig's Twitch channel because he gave me a really big raid the other day I think that would be pretty cool These eyeballs. There's 12s over here, we can do that. I think I'll go for the 12. Oh, I forgot to grab the loot. Oh well. I didn't need it anyway.
think this shade should take us almost to 2500 corruption. Should be pretty close. There's a 14 here as well. I think I might do that. Nah, we'll just do the 12. It's fine. All right, now we put on our low deeps setup. And hopefully we don't mess up the stun lock. Uh, this one is uh, potentially rippy. I think this one can break out a stun. Maybe not. Say epic boss fight. Truly a honorable challenge right here. We fight with honor. All you folks on Twitch want to stick around for a couple minutes. I'd like to set up a raid on the parry once we go through this loot. See if we get anything exciting. And we don't. Hey Alex, what's up? Still pushing? Yeah, I am. We just got to 2444. It's been a pretty good day. We grinded, I don't know, 200 and something corruption. Don't have a whole lot of time this evening, but we are going to send Let's go. Let's go guys. We're doing a raid. Let's do a raid. Love me some raid. Hell yeah. Who walks around and attacks? 
Let's go. Those are always so fun. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for me tonight. If you it's could choose one, would you be been a long, personal? it's been a long day. So yeah, have a good night, everyone. Thanks for dropping in, and hope to.